Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I am so excited, if you didn't get it from that, for this episode today. We are here and we're going to be doing a Campbelltown episode for our uncut and unfiltered episode today. Joined, as always, by Stevie uh, and also by the Pit Stop Boys, aka the Gift Shop Boys, aka Ian Poshkotch and Arian Drink Whiskey with Friends or half of Drink Whiskey with Friends. Gents, thank you all so much for joining. I have no idea what you're talking about. We will explain the uh, nicknames in due course. We will get to it. But uh, today we're here really just to sort of follow up. Obviously, recently we were very lucky to have gone to Campbelltown. We did the Eat, Sleep, Dram, Repeat tour with Springbank. Oh, stop it. And then we did a tour with uh, Glen Scotia as well. So really got involved with the whole Campbelltown vibe, the whole Campbelltown whiskey scene. And uh, yeah, we wanted to kind of follow up. We did obviously the podcast with them at Springbank where we tried the new and upcoming releases, which was seriously cool. A big shout out again to Nicole, who was very kind to sit down with us and let us film that. Which went down very well, by the way. I don't know if you guys are any of you noticed now. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, we're quite it. a new uh, scene here, uh, the podcast scene, and uh, I mean, our followers were just boomed overnight with that Springbank podcast. People were very interested to hear what was coming up, and I don't blame them because I have to say, all six of those drams were fucking exceptional, right? They were really, really cool. I think have we got one of them here today. We got, got one the, of them here today. Yeah, we got the which Karen. Is awesome. I still need to try that hazel burn again, though. But we've got quite a few different drams, and I thought, you know, let's just get involved. Let's enjoy ourselves. Let's talk about the experience. Let's share some stories, and let's, uh, as always, well, before we get into Campbelltown, we're going to start with Glen Scotia. Well, be rude yeah, no, before we get to the Springbank, yeah, I sorry, think, Springbank. Yeah, let's start with the Glen Scotia. To. It was where we finished our tour. Uh, glasses into the center, please, gents. It's where we finished our tour. But I have to say, I, I really enjoyed. You know, rushing across that morning, Hector was an absolute gem for showing us around. Yes. Uh, and I opened this straight away. I haven't tucked into it a huge amount, but it's actually really good whiskey. Um, exclusive what? cask here. So this is First Fill 20 Port Hogshead. It's a five year old cask. Uh, cask strength 58.1%. Um, PT? Non PT? Non peated. I believe yeah. all of the whiskies that were in the shop that day were non peated. I did want to try and see what their peated uh, scotch was like. Mm. Unfortunately, not available on the day, but say la vie. This is an exclusive for the distillery. Um, That's interesting. I think Campbelltown and Port generally is awesome. Um, I assume with a five year old whiskey that you'd probably be going peated, right? So uh, that's where my mind went when yeah. I originally saw it. And I did ask because they had two single cask exclusives they had the five-year-old port first fill port 20 port hogshead sorry and the first fill oloroso i think hogshead as well which was eight years old a little bit older i haven't opened the um the older one um but yeah no i agree i was surprised to see it unpeated however equally oh need to pour myself a dram equally delighted to see it works it actually works really nicely in the glass Yes, it is young. You know, there are some rough edges to it. But I think that actually it's really, really interesting and a great expression from the distillery. So I picked up a bottle of this. I actually picked up two bottle of, po bottles of this. One was meant to be for a gift, but as soon as I cracked this one, I kept it. It was so one. funny. <laughs> so we drove all the way back. We drove all the way up as well, which I suppose is where you earned your first nickname. So Stevie and I drove from just south of London all the way up past Glasgow, around, down through the Loch Lomond National Park, all the way down to Campbelltown. And we did that in a day, really. Yep, 24 yeah. hours. Stop, stopped yeah, overnight, yeah, yeah. obviously, yep. but a day. And we stopped, aside from the once overnight, we stopped twice? Uh, well, only to film, a, yeah. To film one thing very quickly and to reel up, refill on fuel once. These guys fly into Glasgow. Yep. <laughs> you have, what, an hour and a half's drive? Sorry. Oh, come on. It's, uh, it's, it's a bit more than that, was it? <laughs> you, get, you, got, you got three, three, three and a quarter hour was drive on a good day. BA didn't give you a good enough sandwich or something on the plane, or you had to get some uh, lunch? Yeah, well, I, I mean, some food. <laughs> both, both a long them. drive for them, it was. They <laughs> needed to stop. Both of us are lucky enough to get lounge access, so we kind of had a bit of breakfast in the airport. That says it all. Anyway, what? that's why you need to you're stop. the lounge goers you need to <laughs> yeah. stop off the uh, Jesus. uh but then like we um we were just feeling a bit thirsty right we just stopped at the inverary co-op for a, a coke and a and a biscuit you're entitled to that <laughs> you're entitled to that and in fact if i is that the one that's on it's got its own little harbor 
uh, right outside. Yes, it here. is. That's the yeah, one. Yeah, lovely little town. Mm. Lovely little town. I have to say the drive in. So yeah, the drive. It's beautiful. The drive is beautiful. Even is from really, where you guys came from, scenic. obviously. Yeah, it's so Although scenic. I am told, and I still haven't done it, obviously, I'm told that getting the boat is equally stunning. So maybe I've next heard time something to do is drive up and boat back. is even better. Well, say it again. Paragliding. Paragliding, right. But class. getting a helicopter there. Yeah. yeah. It's supposed to be quite an experience. Yeah, that's what um, I mean, seriously, I think what would, be ge- what would genuinely be cool is you get the boat, but you get like the boat halfway across and stop off at Aaron. I think you're going to say swim, swim the rest. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, no, that well, would be awesome. We, we probably went through enough calories with the cooking at Springbank that swimming halfway there would have been the only way of burning it all probably off. Probably right? would have, yeah. Swim back after yeah. the, your trip to Campbelltown. You'll burn off the excess calories. So That's Campbelltown true. being such a beautiful place it is, the drive is just as beautiful, if not just exceptionally, you know, visual. It's, it reminds me of a cross between Canada and Switzerland. It's so beautiful. Right. It's got those trees those hills those mountains that meet the sea but also really just open roads and as somebody who likes to drive a little bit quicker than maybe you should i fucking love the scottish roads it's just I great don't. you whiz uh, around <laughs> you're like i don't know what you're talking about jake you don't drive fast at all now, aaron would you perhaps like to describe our journey back to the airport yeah, after I would, Campbelltown? i would just say that hungover going up and down the hills from side to side <laughs> curvy where roads is not so fun um but yeah i think on the way back i did suffer and uh, we had to stop the car a few times for me well, just to stand you in, in the, the cold car with air. Yeah, if you were in the car with me, you probably would have thrown up a few times. Forget cold air. I would have given you a sick bag. <laughs> I was doing a very good job of keeping exactly to the speed limit. <laughs> so we stopped off, actually, just quickly before we got into Campbelltown, we stopped off at one of their coastlines. I want to say Westport or West Bay. Probably not. I think that's in Dorset. We looked out of the sea. I know you didn't get out of the car. You were on a phone call, but I got the drone up. And Jesus, it reminded me, even though it was overcast that day, it reminded me back in Australia, just golden beaches for far as the eye can see. Like you don't have loads of people there littering and fucking everything up, right? Well, it's yeah, just, it's yeah. just scenic, completely in the middle of nowhere. Untouched. Stunning. Absolutely beautiful coastline. It so is. yeah, we rolled into Campbelltown, I think around three o'clock. Um, and uh, yeah, did we mention that we were on the Eat, Sleep, Jam, Repeat? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yes. So yeah. So no. Yeah. Like I say, I wanted to start off with Glen Scotia just because we didn't spend a huge amount of time with them there. It was a really notable experience for me. I know it was like ultimately such a blip in our in our experience as a whole there, our time at Campbelltown. But I really did enjoy the tour at Glen Scotia. I think it's an awesome distillery. I think it's really interesting, as I think I said in the video when we filmed the distillery tour. Um, you think Campbelltown, everyone thinks Springbank immediately. And even think Springbank over probably Long Row, Hazelburn, you know, Kilkerran as well, even though it's all owned by the same company. And I just think brands like Glen Scotia, sometimes a little bit overlooked, even though actually you look at Scotland as a whole, I would put Glen Scotia well up there from a ca- uh, quality point of view as yep. a brand, right? Mm. It's just putting out some fantastic. Very weird. undervalued, I think. Yeah. And the fact that this was, I think, around 55 quid. Wasn't it? Yeah, I think, yeah. Maybe even a bit less this one. I think maybe the older one was 55. Right. But yeah, I mean, you like, know, very, like... very reasonably priced for a, what, 58% whiskey, whatever it is. Yep. Um, cask strength. Yeah, 58.1% distillery yep. exclusive. I know it's only five years old, but it, it works at five years old. And what I like about these sorts of distillery exclusives is it gives you a good look at what the liquid is, how the liquid is maturing throughout the years, right? Mm. which is really interesting most people as well right doing distillery exclusives they're trying to make them super premium like most distilleries they'll start about 100 pounds yes. like and then you're going upwards from there so i and think well it's up, yeah. super cool that they've yeah. got something for 50 quid that you can only pick up the distillery yeah i know i'd agree with Absolutely. that 100 percent. really 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 cool and and from a, an aficionado point of view like again like some people might oh 58.1 like oh it's quite strong and like i say it's not like this perfect dram it's kind of like it's a, rough, a, a wonderful you know? work in progress you yeah, get yeah, to yeah. see what they're doing you get to experience it but as an aficionado that's really special to me it's not about like oh this is a polished finished product that you know you can sell like you say in for oh, hundreds of pounds it's just like we're working on this at the minute lads try it for 55 quid there you go boom mm. and i'm I'm happy I put one of these did in my you, basket. Aaron, Ian, did you pick anything up from Glen Scotia at all, bottle-wise? Um, no, well, I mean, my... Uh, Shame! No, I'm joking. 
it was more the fact that a, a we were flying and suitcase was already full dude you don't have suitcase to explain it to me the, the, uh, between the two of you you left Campbell down with a good few casks worth of whiskey yeah. i'd say yeah uh, you well, and, your and boots. ba managed to destroy my suitcase anyway it was so full of whiskey thankfully the whiskey survived but just quickly you've obviously do you have a love for glen scotia do you drink much from them yeah uh, yeah so the um well we both went along to the kind of it wasn't really a launch like an event where they were showcasing the 12 year old um seasonal release the amontillado finish it is absolutely beautiful when you've got people tra- chasing springbank 12 cask strengths they're paying you know 150 200 pounds an auction and you can get a funky you know slightly unusual sherry finish glen scotia 12 year old easily available 55 ish percent 70 quid like it's fantastic was like, that one of your favorite jams of last year is that yes, that? yeah yeah, yeah, yeah okay. absolutely i really agree with what you just said and this is kind of why i wanted to do this episode as campbelltown and not mm. just springbank because yes we did spend most of our time with springbank and obviously the hype is all about springbank at the minute right um it's one of these sort of key brands that is driving the whole whiskey community forward but I think you're you're absolutely correct and and, and the, the downside of spring bank is there are a lot of people buying it purely with a view to flip it purely mm. with a view to making money never have any interest in drinking it and it's a real shame but you do look around and you're kind of questioning why brands like glen scotia or the other brands that spring bank owns your kill karen is one that i particularly and i think we all said during our time there fuck me like whether you want to sort of agree with the word undervalued or not, the fact yeah. that people are chasing and spending so much money on spring banks, but Kilkerran is so far behind, it's kind of like, mm. come on, lads, use your feckin' heads here. Like, these are really good quality single malt scotches from the same region, made in similar ways. They have those similar funks, like you say. By the same fucking people in the case of Kilkerran, right? Do you know, it's crazy. It really is. And one that we'll come on to shortly, and I'm going to sing the fucking... It's a buy from me. I'll tell you now. You don't have to wait to the end of the episode. This Campbelltown lock, this is probably the most entry-level expression you can buy in Campbelltown, right? Mm -hmm. Can't remember exactly what it cost me, which I probably should. 40 quid, I think. But I've drunk enough of the bottle that the memory has been wiped. And that's wonderful, (laughs) isn't it? When you don't have to remember how much you paid for a bottle. But this is so good. It gives Springbank vibes. It's super premium. Maybe not quite as complex, but for an everyday blended malt, you're not looking for that. But it's exactly what you need. An everyday drinker, you don't want to, like you say, you don't want to spend 150, 200 quids on a spring mate's fucking 12 year old, you know? This and is available. And available. That's yeah, the key. Very thing, like, accessible. Key exactly mm-hmm. that, Ari. And everyone's chasing these things in the secondary market. Go to the distillery, go to the shop, you know? You can pick other really great stuff up. And I just, it doesn't make sense to me. Like with certain Springbank releases, don't get me wrong, I get the fuss, I get the chase. Mm -hmm. But when you are looking at the core range being flipped around on the secondary market, come on, guys, fuck off. Just do yourselves a favor, open the bottle, (laughs) enjoy it, and just piss off, would you? Right? I think in, in one thing is that we went at the wrong time almost because now I'm absolutely obsessed and you cannot get them so this is the worst time to really be so obsessed with them true i was saying that to stevie the other day for the first time in many many years i've been going on the auctions for the last month and looking at spring Mm. and i would never normally do that like a few years ago i was buying the spring bank burgundies auction the 12 year olds i was buying them 60 70 pounds to begin with then they shot up to 150 you know I'm not really looking at them so much anymore. I've got enough of them. I might start looking at them again when I run out. But, but you know, like other bits and pieces, I wouldn't normally even bother looking at because that 28-year-old miniature that we opened, you know? Yes. Five, six hundred pounds to begin with. Jesus. Like, I just open it and enjoy it. It was 110 pounds. I'll have that. It's worth it, every penny. But I, you can't be considering the rest of it. But you're right, Ari. You go along. You fall in love with the whole thing again. And then it's like, fuck, I need another job or I need to sell an organ or something. <laughs> like, the worst is to do that with, really. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, but the craziest thing, though, is like, you know, obviously we had the most fantastic time at the blending experience, right? And we were there with Mr. Hard Tatties himself, Donald, and we all blended our own bottles. Jake, you ruined your own experience no, by bottling something <laughs> immediately <laughs> without it, tasting. No, anything. no, I Whoa. sorry, without tasting. I'm almost, I only brought this along to show today. So we, Ian's right. We had a really, really, really cool experience where we were given six different whiskeys. What did we have? We had bourbon, we had rum, we had 
port sauternes sauternes that was it and refill port, the first fill cherry and refill and yeah exactly six different whiskies to choose from we get to create our own blend and yes i was quick i'll give you that all right however this is fucking sensational i stand behind that you finished too soon <laughs> You know what? I completed it, mate. I finished well. Mm -hmm. I finished strong. He um, says it's sensational. I would put, and this... I don't question that until I've had it again. However, I would put this how up against many any drams of your deep did he have, or did we all have when we blended? You know, well, I blended. It on was a fairly after a fresh strong palette. warehouse. Arian rolled out of that fucking whole blending experience like he was a fucking sherry butt. <laughs> Honestly, he didn't know which way was up. I took but it, it was very all... seriously, and I was I <laughs> was, was standing like tester. he was a school teacher, and I was there with my presentation, and I was like, "Is this perfect? you made us very proud? Uh, thank you very you much. Did. I appreciate <laughs> that." And from... but we came off the back of a very strong warehouse tasting. Oh. From we did. We did. And a morning of Kill Karen. So, you know, yeah, no, maybe it was a good thing that Jake just went straight into it because I think the more you tasted to blend, the more no, I'm, I'm sure you got. I, I'm, I'm happy with my end result. But I, I tell you what, what I will put out there, and I haven't even verified if you guys are even up for this before asking the question. So it may disappoint people at home, but I would put my bottle up against all three of your bottles. And if you want to do a blind tasting, we can get. Nicole. Industry people involved. We're getting we could get some random people from our community <laughs> involved. Whatever. I don't care. We can get some, try and get some real top level journalists and we send out samples to each of them. I'm up for that. And yeah. I just want to add that when you po posted yours on Instagram, whose bottle did they pick the most of? Purely based yours? on color. Yeah. yeah. Purely Genuinely. based on color. Yeah. There was just. I missed that. Okay. Oh. See, I'm not, I'm not an Instagram man. So fair play. Good yeah. for you, Arian. So I'm up big for big ups. Big ups. Like, okay. Though, I reckon we do that. According then. We'll to our bottles, you and I bottled ours the day before. So. Uh... Yes. <laughs> well, you might well done with the drink, man. With the, with the time you took to do it, you probably <laughs> pretty much did, right? Um, <laughs> I just wanted it to be a day older. The AYS, <laughs> that little but, bit more. <laughs> but like the, you can see with like the passion and enthusiasm, we're all talking about it. Like what a fucking fantastic memory it was. Mm. People have flipped oh, those yeah, bottles. They've Jeez, gone low. Broken. Paid home. So hold on a second. What the Terrible. fuck? Before you go all the way to Campbelltown, you have an amazing experience blending your own whiskey, and then you sell it. But not even that, Jay. What I was going to say off. is you spend, what was it, £800 per head for the whole Eat, Sleep, Dram, <laughs> Repeat experience. The, the, the blending experience was like 10% of the three days that we had. To yeah. do all that just for that. Is madness. Yeah, you know it is total madness. Then I again, agree. people go all the way there just to buy the cage bottles. It's silly, man. But it's silly. It's the, so fucking short. -sighted. Embarrassing is what it is. Yeah, I agree. Like, I completely. Agree. I would feel very embarrassed. like I'm. I didn't rush. So I, as you can see, I got home and I opened a few bottles. Uh, all of the ones to my left here. I've probably overindulged this last month. Springbank, I hold you entirely responsible. <laughs> but I I came home with this specially blended bottle and I was in no rush to open it. I would really like to open it with you guys and do a bit of a fucking yeah. thing with it, have a bit of a laugh. But at the same time, the idea that someone would sell this, you're right. Just, you're well, the absolute loser. Like, yeah. you have not enjoyed your time there at all. Like, honestly, you've driven or flown or whatever all the way to Campbelltown to buy a bottle to pay for your flights in there. Really, isn't it? To be honest, just the, the most sad. the most sad. Insane. Exactly, you're a sad <laughs> act. You at home, right? You know who you it. are. You know exactly. Who you fucking <laughs> bow your head in shame. <laughs> to, to me, disgusting. The, the insane thing is actually the people buying them for the premium. Oh, I true. agree. The cage bottles, that's right? Yeah, that's true. That's very you, true. It says what you're getting on the fucking tin, so you know you're getting a rum cast. You know you're getting a first fill sherry. You know the age on it. This. On Is the bottle, some novice twit blending whatever he wants together. Yeah, but you get zero information. Yep. as well. So you're purely going on color and the fact it's a Springbank. You don't know what age it is. You know the strength, but yeah. you know the ABV. That's yeah. it. Yeah. It's a Springbank of an ABV. Yeah, yeah. Why the fuck would you pick that up Weird. for three, four hundred pounds? Is that what they're going? For? Yes. Oh, I didn't even look because it annoyed me when he said that. I just didn't want to look. That's disgusting. Because you could get. These kind of cage bottles of a similar age. For what, 200, 200 They're like 200, 250. You get fucking two cage bottles for that. Like, it's mind-blowingly insane. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Yeah. If we see these blending session bottles on auction, I wish Wait. there was a way that you could comment on stuff on auction and just, like, <laughs> bully people <laughs> into taking it down. <laughs> well, there was a bit of a boycott with the auctions with the um, Ukrainian Springbank, right? Oh, yes. fucking... I don't know if that it, it so got him taken down or not, but... 
Some of them uh, did. Some of the auction did, sites yeah. did take okay, them down, good, and good that was them, good. Good for them. Yeah. Um, yeah, the experience was just one small part of a, an amazing time for myself. But it was such know? a highlight for me. And I've done like blending experiences before. You know, I've done that sort of thing before. Sure. I, it, it's not something new to me. But the way they set it out, uh, it was just a really nice. And it, again, I think the thing about the Eat, Sleep, Drown, Repeat tour for me as we all discussed whilst we were there, we were so shocked at the backlash of like, this is too expensive. Mm. And anyone at home who thinks it's too expensive, honestly, again, you're just like, just. It's not, is it? Just a, it's, it's just just not. a poor person's mentality. It's just like, you, you don't understand what you're getting. Look into it a bit more, understand a bit more. There was so much offered to us there. Like, honestly. It, it was one of the, it was the best whiskey experience trip, whatever I've had in my time in the industry so far. Yeah. Like, it was special. And it was up there it for me. Really I special. would agree with that. I think that, yeah, you're absolutely right. They really made you feel like a king whilst you were there. I mean, from the point of view, like, guys at home, just so you understand, you, you pay £800. Let's talk through what we got. Let's actually mm. discuss. So we arrive in, you've got your accommodation sorted. Each of us had a really nice room set up, all sorted. Themed to a core range bottle. Which is kind of cool. <laughs> and you arrive in, first evening, You've got a three course meal and four dram tasting. Six dram course. tasting. Well, Which sorry, Jake, I'm going to interrupt you there because you're missing one thing. The, the, bar. the first thing we noticed when well, we got there in the afternoon is the bar in the living room. I was going to come on to that. I was going to come on to that. No, but, but and, and it, because it holds a point of, to the bottle I've bought. But yeah, there is a bar. And what's in that bar, Jake? So you've got two levels. You've got the Springbank level and the Caddenheads level, essentially, right? Springbank, you've got the... <laughs> the the hand pills. The Caddenhead level. Is it, no, no, but what's the, the uh, 70CL bottle of the... Can't remember. Oh, what the Springbank? Yeah, it's the um, it's the Campbelltown Lock, dude. Yeah, oh, it was. Of yeah. course, it was. Sorry. It was, yeah, so you have yeah, a yeah. seventy centiliter Campbelltown Lock, although it's not this one. Definitely isn't this one. This is a different one. And you have four twenty centiliter Demi Jean hand fill bottles, like the one that Ian's holding up here. So you've got the Springbank, the Long Road, the Hazelburn, and the Kilkerry. Yep. Non age statements. Demi Jean bottles. These are essentially like infinite bottles drawn from random cask, continuously fucking being refilled in the shop. Really, really good whiskey. Beautiful little liquids. So 20 centiliters times four. Then you've got the Cadden Heads, seven year olds, something or other. As the, the seven 70, star. As seven the, star, that was it, as the 70 centiliter. And then you've got the rum, the gin. And then their sherry cask and the normal sherry their cask blend, and their the blend. Standard Again, blend. Demi, Demi a bit of booze, right? So, yeah, what? Essentially, four bottles of booze plus, yeah, which then get refilled every day. And well, this is this that's... is it. It was crazy. We were all drinking, tucking away. Oh, let's like it was not, the, let's it not was go breakfast. crazy day one, guys. It you know, was we had breakfast. Our, our three course meal. <laughs> we had our oh, fuck it. Was it six whiskeys day one? Yeah, six it was whiskeys. Six, six, six whiskeys. whiskeys on evening number one. We then Donald leaves. He leaves us to it. We get a little bit rowdy with the bar. It's night number one. Let's tuck in a little bit, but let's not be silly, lads. We need to make this last. <laughs> So we go in, we probably do, what, half of each of the 20 centiliter bottles, I'd say. Wake up for breakfast the next day. We've got that bar to look forward to. And when we came in in the evening, the whole thing Well, no, Jake, refilled. if you remember, maybe you didn't catch on to this because I went and spoke to Don in the kitchen. At breakfast, there was a guy from Springbank that came in, was walked through our dining room and into the house. And I thought, what the fuck is he What's doing? He doing? Yeah, was that so what he was doing? And I, I went into completely. the kitchen and I said, Donald, who was that? Because he came out and left really quickly, I and he didn't went. See that. Oh, he's just filled up all your all your your, your bar, and I That's was like, "What?" Gas crack. <laughs> That's so funny. So. So funny. that yeah, to start the whole experience off, you've got a bottomless spring bank bar right? that is literally refilled every single day. Literally, so every if morning. you want, you could do near enough. What it would be three and a half liters of liquid. Yeah, but for your liver sake, please do not. Yeah, yeah obviously, yeah. I wouldn't advise that. You know, <laughs> however, <laughs> we gave it a pretty good fucking shot. I'd say. You know? <laughs> we was... also cracked a twenty-year-old long road, didn't we? That evening, the first evening. Yeah, well, yeah, you did. did. You uh, bought that. Um, it was yeah, very good. It was good actually, and there was, was uh, those five whiskeys. So yeah, the first evening, a three-course meal cooked in-house by a host who served it to you, and he didn't need to do awesome. that. Awesome. The the yeah the six bottle tasting the the bar like. Night even number just one. Number one. It, you kind of like, I feel like this is painful. Day itself. one Already. hasn't even yeah. started. Like, the, exactly I mean, the, the accommodation is literally two, three minute walk from Springbank. It is a really good standard. Um, you know, obviously you get your own private room, like beds comfy, like two of the rooms have showers know. in them. Like, yeah, it was next level. 
it really was next level. The idea Very that this is overpriced, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> I was I was listening to people saying that sort of shit. I was just like, you know, so what? You know, the, some of the people that I'd heard like it's it's fag packet maths, right? Because if you go on Airbnb and you look at stuff in Cameltown, like you know, when I went to the festival in twenty twenty two, yep, um, I stayed in a fairly cheap airbnb with this some mates the thing. Look, you can stay in some absolute dive and yes. sleep on someone's fucking sofa if you want i'm sure but like they really <laughs> put you up but that's the that's the problem isn't it that's where people like get their bag packet out and start doing some sums right and they're like oh well i could just eat a kebab and i could just like go on then mate. all right okay so i'll yeah. tell you what then let's take the accommodation and let's take the food out which is a big thing to take out Three nights in a yeah. wonderful house that is catered for. Not only did we have cooked breakfast, Your weighted hand smoked for- salmon and scrambled eggs, or full English, your choice. Not only did we have lunches waiting for us when we got in from our events every single day. Not only did we have three course meals. One evening, we even had cocktail kits all laid out for us. Yeah. Three cocktail kits. Like, come on. So aside from all of that, let's just take that out of it. Okay. Day number one, full access tour of Springbank Distillery seriously fucking cool everything from the malting floors which i was that was the bit that i was most excited about seeing obviously having not visited spring Mountain before i think it's amazing that they still do yeah, that climbing around in their rafters up yes there. all the way up like, there that was fucking cool yeah. right that was so cool like really you were in a uh a, a just a Another stepping time. back in time man yeah. exactly it really was so cool so that's the start of your day and then from there, we went on to do the Cadenheads warehouse tasting. Um, I believe from there, I think it was the podcast. Yeah, we did the new and four. Straight, oh, straight from there. So we yeah. went from there to six drams, new and upcoming whiskeys, which we turned into a podcast. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. It's really, really cool. Then we had lunch, which we're not counting. And then we had a tour of Campbelltown which I found amazing. The number of distillery names that I know nothing about that you haven't yeah, heard no. of. Because there were, what, <laughs> 35 plus distilleries in Campbelltown Loads. at one point. It was whiskey hub of the world, right? Ian, do you want to pour another dram while like Jake's... Uh... Nattering away. I'll tell you yeah, what. Right. Or Jake, <laughs> whoever. Someone pour... Let's pour this. What, so, what order are we going in? Are we doing... Do you, do you want to do this? Should we do the lock next? Or because it's a bit lower ABV? If you want. Should we go into the... I'll tell Let's you do a lock for some of the lock. This is sensational. Again, I've only been back for a month or so. I've thoroughly enjoyed this. Everyone I've l- given a little drop of this to has said, wow. And it really is. While you're pouring that, I just wanted to say about the, about the tawny. It's, it, the sweetness really um, kind of eases you into it considering the APV. So although it goes unbelievably spicy. Yes. And then at the end. The, the sweetness really like brings you into it. It's a really, really solid dram for the price, as you mentioned. Oh, my God. It is crazy. And yes, it is young. And it is, um, you know, a bit rough around the edges, Jake says. But no, you're right. That sweetness carries through that. And, oh, I, and I enjoy that a oh, lot. Yeah. Um, so this is the Campbelltown Lock. So this is the Campbelltown Lock. A new release lock. from them. I think it's release number three, they said. It's the most sherried version of it, essentially. Um, so... Is this what's in there? Do this you is know all yet? five blended malt Scotch whiskies from Campbelltown? Yeah, right, including Glen Scotia, including Glen Scotia, including a bit of awesome. probably not much Glen Scotia. Yeah, because uh, Glen Scotia don't sell this, or do they? Uh, I haven't seen no. it in the shop. I don't. I, I, I don't remember seeing it in, in no. the shop, and I don't think Loch Lomond have this as part of their offering. Um, so I would imagine a, a nominal amount of Glen Scotia. I would imagine probably from tasting it a good amount of Hazelburn and Kilkerran. Yeah. But I'm really interested to hear your thoughts. I just think just just wow. Just great. Like yeah. this is like forty something quid, I think it was. Uh yeah, I, I think you've got actually I think there's a I think there's a decent hit of long grow in this as well as Kilkerran. Hmm? I'm gonna say more long grow and 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 Kilkerran than Hazelburn. Actually. Yeah. Okay. I, I know what you mean. There is that depth to it. I just think like 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 I was saying before, the the chase, the everyone hunting for these yeah, specialist yeah, bottles. Yeah, yeah. That's just, but they're not, that's just they're not chasing them open. for the liquid though, Jake. No, it's kind and of that's why we're laughing at forty quid, right? Correct. Um correct. Because this is it. Look, if you want to drink spring bank, you know, oh it's too expensive, oh the secondary market, oh no, no. Fuck off. Just buy this. Yeah. Cause this is 
It's Springbank. It's with other bits and pieces, yeah. But they're all delicious bits and pieces. It works sensationally in the glass. And this is the thing. We will come on to the bottle I just offered up there a second ago, the Cageville bottle, which again, <laughs> I've been enjoying far too much over the last month. <laughs> but this is 14-year-old Sherry Cask Springbank. Now, I love it. It's delicious. But it is sulfury. And it is not well balanced at all in my mind. Now, that's what I look for when I drink, you know, certain, you know, Campbelltown whiskeys, especially like a, a, a spring bank or a long row. Sometimes I like just being smacked around the fucking face, right? There's something enjoyable about that. However, if you want a well balanced whiskey, this is just a no brainer. You, there's nothing to sort of be unsure about. Everything yeah. is exactly as it should be. I would say this version trumps the previous version as well for me and and i do think that it's got that long row the one that we had on the bar mm -hmm. yeah i yeah. agree and i know what you mean now that you say it, actually yeah there is a good amount of long row in there you get it on the nose more than anything hmm. sorry Jake, yeah. i interrupt you to pour a dram you were saying after lunch walking we tour. had the walk around to camel town so that's day one yep day two well no no sorry actually i want to just interject there and say that and I don't think we realized until the day before that we were in Campbelltown on Burns night. Yeah. Yes. And for dinner, they knocked us up some, well, it was neat. It was haggis with haggis a twist. Haggis But yeah. the haggis was inside chicken, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, and the other thing to note as well is that everything they cooked pretty much had spring bank in it. The gravy, the, the, the cream on the dessert. The fucking marmalade for your toast in the morning, my guy. Yeah, and exactly. I tell you what, I've gone through a jar and a half of the Springbank marmalade, <laughs> a jar and a bit of the uh, of the blueberry rum, nice. and half a jar of that long row chutney. We need to Bomb. make a drive just oh, for I that. I should have got some of that fucking chutney. That chutney I, I is regret good, that. man. I've, oh yeah. my god! I bust through that half jar like literally the weekend we came home. I, I've gone through half a bottle of the, half a jar of the of Donald's fucking marmalade as well. It's <laughs> so really good. good, so good. But and this is it. It's like there is so much on offer. They really so are much. getting you involved. In but it was level. just such a novelty really to be in Campbelltown on Burns night and what did we do we did none other than go down to Campbelltown lock mm. you sparked up a big old cigar and you cracked open your spring bank like yeah it was a special evening it, it doesn't really, really get much better than that for a whiskey enthusiast no really no it was a it was a it was a high point for me I have to say yeah. it was cool it was very very cool it's it was stunning there as trip. well because you can see the the stars, you can see the lake open out. There's no, you. exactly, there's no pollution. No, no, it's just clear everywhere, isn't it? And uh, the lock is just stunning. It's awesome. Like yeah. first thing in the it morning, last awesome. thing at night, like you said, it doesn't matter, Ari. The stars are out at night. The sun, you know, it's just crisp. And and again, like, I, you know, I talk about Scotland all the time. And you know, Stevie, I'm trying to move up to Scotland myself. We're trying to bring the business up to Scotland and get a base. Um and I always talk to, you know, family and friends. Move to Scotland. It's very cold up there. And, oh, no. It's like you're up there and you wake up in the morning. You're like, oh, it's cold. It's miserable. It's like, oh. But you know what? It's funny. You've got a bit of space. I don't have a whole, all of London breathing in on me. But you dude, know, I don't that have... week we were up there, it was warmer up there than it was down in Surrey. Correct. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. It's, it's such nonsense, man. I and listen. it normally is. It's fucking but, crazy. But uh, that's why I think they just do that on purpose. They keep it a They're secret. trying to keep us all I mean? south, mate. Yeah, yeah, it's freezing up. up here. Don't bother. It's um, horrible. It's horrible weather. So that was Wednesday in a nutshell, basically. We yeah. Had the, um, I had the Caddenheads tasting. The warehouse tasting was in the... Uh, was it on, that was on, a Wednesday. That it was, was a Wednesday. It was before well. the walk, wasn't it? Yeah. Now, let's talk about that. Okay. Because mm. you... No one was really impressed with that. And no hard feelings towards Caddenheads. Yeah, heads. I think that was probably the lowest part. But let's of be the, honest. Yeah. Yeah, no. Look, honesty. Yeah, let's call a spade a spade. Um, the Caddenheads warehouse tasting was pretty substandard i think right yeah i mean no, no disrespect to andrew who took us around and it's, not be, it's not because of it's a lovely guy yeah, the, I think it was just, the liquids weren't anything particularly special and i i also felt the same way about the warehouse tasting when i was at the festival as well that was right. also cabin heads or spring cabin heads right, yeah okay. spring man was fantastic yeah which it was again this time we'll come up to that in a second but yeah it it pains me to say it because cabin heads have released some fucking fantastic whiskies and they still are capable of because i bought some stuff from them last year that was amazing dude they've got you know stocks and stocks and stocks of casks they, they've been but i mean they're the oldest indie bottler going right yeah in scotland so it's uh, like they're sitting on some yeah stuff. they've got and some plenty awesome, of it awesome shit so yep. it's like 
what should you know what's the problem I don't so know. well okay i i am going to say that there are two problems one I think the stock is probably dwindling a bit compared to where it used to be. Right. Second, I think they are still getting to grips with the art of finishing. Mm. And I think they're having to do that because the quality of the casks, probably because they're having to buy parcels like a lot of people, is not as consistent as it used to be. Yeah. And because other people have been doing finishing for longer, they're still as I said, getting their head around it. And so, you know, one of the drams we tried was, I'm going to get this wrong, a... Something in cognac. Ma- no, it was a Glen Farkless in cognac. Okay. I was going to go for the Manic Moor in the rum, rum yeah. in a crony rum cask. And you've got quite a delicate spirit. Some would say a fairly average blending spirit that you then dump a first fill, funky, high ester, crony cask in, and it tastes like someone's fucked up your rum. And you know what? I felt exactly the same. And I, I'm kind of, I will precursor this by saying I'm not the biggest fan of cognac finishes. I think that they should be used sparingly at very specific occasions, very specific whiskies. But you said it was a Glen Farkless finished in cognac? Yeah. I'm sorry, it was shit. It really wasn't nice. It wasn't well balanced. There was nothing to it. It just didn't sit well with me. And I agree, the Manic more as well. Second, third, fourth fill rum casks. Something to just give it some light you know, a little gentle push along, but first fill rum, it was it was off. It'd been there for ages though, because I tried it when it was first fill rum cask back in like May last year. It'd been right. sat there for bloody ages. Right, like right, it was right. the only one that was a duplicate from what I'd had before, probably because no one was buying it. Yeah. Um But I have to say it wasn't even the warehouse tasting for me as well. We went straight from the warehouse tasting to the shop. And there wasn't that much to buy in the shop. There wasn't anything that impressive. I mean, I you said there wasn't much to buy. Miniatures. There was plenty of liquid on the shelves. Was there? It was all kind of quite similar. Yes, I bought three miniatures. Sure. I paid £10.50 Let's for not 30 for... milliliter miniatures, which <laughs> is quite expensive for... I got like a, a 10-year-old Royal Brackler, like a 13, 14-year-old Craig Like Let's not quite mention, a lot for a 30 mil dram. did go and dig something out a little bit special a little bit guys. A absolutely but you know what forget that look absolutely and, and like i say look um it was andrew it was it was andrew, andrew yeah, yeah. He, he was a lovely host it was really you know nothing against him no no of course it's not. just obviously they've set up this tasting and my gonna... mind was everything else that we experienced they literally wanted to make us feel like kings now i don't know if there was any level of us having a camera with us and us obviously having sp- spent so long trying to i personally don't think so i think that they give everyone the same experience yeah, I yeah, yeah. So. However, I was that much more surprised when we went for the Cadenheads tasting. The fact that, you know, we've got two influencers with their phones out. We've got, you know, guys who work in the industry with a big camera there. We're recording stuff. I would have just thought maybe even if it's that standard thing, they would have brought something, tried to level it up a little bit, maybe. I just thought it was a bit basic. The whiskeys were all kind of like eight to 12 15 year old drams a fairly sort of accessible distilleries nothing too interesting like a lot of the stock that was there what jake's like, saying is he wants the red carpet rolled out That's <laughs> like, but it's they, not even yeah. it's not even right, the, right, no, no, he, but, it's not even for the for the fact that there was influence the people that are going to be doing this that is it. experience it doesn't matter who it is there, it should be good yeah. The, yeah they're they're the type of people that are not just having they're one or two whiskeys they're, they're, they're going to be enthusiasts and going to be buying Exactly. I'm going to be buying. And, and you know what? How much money did we spend in the Springbank shop each? A lot. Right? A lot. How much money did you spend in the Cadenhead shop? None. 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 I, literally, I spent, I bought three miniatures. What What they didn't even have that I was quite surprised in, I've had a couple of bottles in, in the past. They do a uh, a 12 year old blend that is a similar concept to the hand fills. It's like an infinity bottle. Right. They, or, or more, of, maybe more of a Solera thing because they kind of continue to age it. They take 50% out, bottle it. They stick another bunch of stuff in that's all at least 12 years old, and then they bottle it as another batch. Right. They do that pretty regularly. They didn't have a single bottle of that in the in the shop. And normally, right. it's again, very well priced, about £40. I'd have picked up one of those because I've had a couple in the past. It was just a slightly weird selection. Right? It was. It was. It was very strange. Uh, there was stuff there, you're right, but it wasn't what you wanted to see. It wasn't what you were expecting. Uh, you know, the shop is partly in flux. Like, what I didn't realize, having having been there in the festival, is how big the premises is. They're because doing the, all that work in the back area. Yeah, the actual yeah. shop is quite small. They are putting in another blending room. They're going to have a similar experience to Springbank. Hopefully that is a really cool thing to do. Yeah. 
Um, they're going to have a bar there, which again, I think is really awesome. And it's going to be great for Campbelltown as, as a whole. So I really hope that they kind of come back with it because, um, as I said, I was disappointed by the warehouse tour at the festival. I was disappointed by the warehouse tour when we were there. The big Cadden Heads tasting at the festival last year was, for the most part, incredible. There was a 37-year-old undisclosed Highland, definitely not Glen Morangi. Um, fantastic. They ended up bottling it end of last year. I got a bottle of it. It was so good. They right. had a um, 24, maybe 25-year-old uh, Ben Rinnis, um that was absolutely beautiful. I kind of keep on keeping my eye out to see like, if and when they decide they're going to bottle that. They still have some really nice old stock. But this about. is the thing. It was like, so they they lined up. It was a good number of drams. It was what, six drams? Six drams. I think yeah. six drams in that warehouse. None of them really stood out. But obviously we had a, a, a group of big aficionados following us and they had taken out a couple of special bits for them. Now, we're very lucky. Andrew was kind enough to give us a sample of this. It was 2009 Jura, if I remember no, no. correctly. No, 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 it was older no, than no. that. 1988 Jura. It was very old. It was, Shit, 30, was, it? Yeah. It was 31 year old yeah, Jura. Yeah. <laughs> And that's what they'd pulled out for the other group. <laughs> Sorry. Probably, maybe not Let 80, me take that again. Maybe not 88. Maybe it was 90 or something then. That I didn't add, think it was that old. No, it was, yeah, okay. it was, 31, it was old. It was old. 31-year-old okay. Jura. Okay, so it was old Jura. My sincere apologies. Point being, it was really fucking good. But the only reason that was out is because there was a very serious group following us. He specifically said that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I kind of feel like that's one of the... That's actually, no. That is, without a doubt, the best Jura I've ever tried. I don't like Jura. I struggle with Jura. I think the wood policy is terrible. I think there's a lot of poor, particularly on the open market, like whatever about their OBs. You know, we talk about that when we do a Jura episode. But I, I really struggle to get behind their single cask stuff. I thought that that was exceptional. And to me, it was just kind of like, why didn't you get this out whilst we were in your warehouse? Like, it doesn't make any sense, man. You've got like, all these weird, you know, and, and equally just like really like stand like 10 year old Altmore. It's like, yeah, okay, this is good. Uh, fine. And the, the people like, that 10 year old Altmore. I've got a fuck ton of this myself. Great. Like, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> the, the people that come, like, and it's not just us, splash the fucking cash. And that's it. As well. I right? would have spent so much money in their shop if they had some cool, interesting things. If I could have bought that Jura in the shop, yeah, I would have spent, I mean, I didn't realize how old it was, so maybe I need to up my price a bit, but I would have spent, you know, 150, 200 quid on that, no bothers. Yeah, like, absolutely. It was good, it was really good. They, so the, I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the thing. Like, there were people coming into the shop, like, trying to buy more cage bottles than they were allowed to, picking up pretty much anything that were there. You know, you were pe having people quite, coming in on a fairly regular basis, who clearly were not local, hmm. racking up, three four five hundred pounds at the till even with the fairly limited stock that was available there cadden heads in comparison was a bit of a tumbleweed right yes. and you kind of think if you were doing a really good warehouse tasting tour because those are only the, the only bottles that you can get when you've done the tour right they're not available in the shop they're not available online yeah. that's the only way of getting them yeah you put out some really good stuff and you say this is two three hundred pound bottles most people who are do up there to do the tour are not going to have a problem paying that. Jump right so in. why put out 10, 12-year-old stuff that's got a dodgy finish? Agreed. Agreed, agreed, agreed. I don't want to spend too much longer on this, though. I feel like we're being negative. We had so much crack on the tour. Like, I don't want to be too negative about Cadenheads. Like, at the end of the day, it was a really cool experience. It was a little bit disappointing on that side of things. But that was after we had done the Glen Gyle tour. Right, so day two we did Glen Gyle first. Oh, day morning. three was Glen Gyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. Day three. If you're, I'm counting second, day one. Yeah, second as full the first day. Full day. Yeah. yeah day yeah, two yeah. is the second full day, right? Yeah. Okay. So, day two. Oh, whatever. I think the other thing that we should mention, just when it comes to those distillery tours that you don't get to do on the normal, is we got to try the new make as well, right? Mm. That's what I was about to say. So, sorry. the Glen Gyle. No, 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 no. But such a good point. So the Glen Gyle, it was really interesting for me to try the Kilkerran. And the difference between Springbank and, Kil and Glen Gyle Distillery making the Kilkerran malt is literally the line art. I find that fascinating. I'm sorry, I know I said that in, when we were, and I've, you've probably got other content or whatever. We don't have to include it in this as like a, a key part, but I just find that so interesting. It's malt peated to the same specification on the same malting floor at the same time, et cetera, et cetera. With one difference. Tell me. You're talking about Springbank and Glengal. And Kilkerran, yeah. 
with one difference. The lineup. Yeah, the lineup. Well, that's what I'm saying. Sorry, yeah. That and what one is it, difference. 14% made... or something? Yeah, so uh, Springbank is 7% down. Yes, mm-hmm. 14% difference, yeah. Glen Gyle is 7% that's up. That's it. So it's 14 And it changes everything. Can like, I... well, so <laughs> <All right>. fucking <laughs> drastically. I, I'm, I'm going to be a nerd now. I'm going to say that's not the only difference. What's that's the, only... the main difference. So you've got, obviously, the, the mash ton is a, it's not an open top mash ton. It's a sealed mash ton. Okay. And Do you think that's going to make a significant difference? I don't know. This is so. This is this is why I would love people to comment as yeah. to what they think the difference is. So you've got a sealed top stainless steel mash tun as opposed to an open top cast iron mash tun, and obviously you've got a uh, a much more modern like uh, what's the name of the thing that stirs everything round in it? Oh, um, we asked at the time. The stirrer. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The big Thank spoon, you. man. The big, the big spoon. spoon. Yeah. Um, and then you've got stainless steel washbacks as well, rather than wooden washbacks. Right. But you are looking at exactly the same like... fermentation time. Yeah. It's... Or the same everything. Apart it's from. such yes, a nominal difference. Yeah. And it's such yeah. a drastic change in outcome. It's yes. fucking fascinating. That uh, cleric was delicious. And then exactly. And killed yeah. them. That is exactly Both what them, I was yeah, just about but... to say. Kill the, Karen, the especially. The new mate, Kill Karen, is just considering it's such a dirty PG dram. It's so nice. It was so sweet, so good. You yeah. know, uh, what I will also say is the Springbank new make is the clearest line between new make and finished product that I have ever fucking tasted. I've, I've That's not really had interesting. I've not had loads and loads. But I've probably had 10, 12 bits of new enough. make over, over the years yeah, enough yeah, yeah. and some are grim <laughs> some are some it is it's not good yeah no some i don't like I've, I've tasted... some are delicious Oof. in their own right some you get to the point where you can taste some of the notes springbank you're like oh fuck me this is like springbank <laughs> um and i i was so amazingly pleasantly surprised by that It's very generous pour. Yeah, there, I, I don't thank know you. how we're going to go through all these whiskies when you're getting like full drams. But we'll thank get you, there. We'll get there. Um, so what have we got here, man? <laughs> so this is a cage bottle, and again, I just think it's so funny that people sell these things. I've had so much enjoyment out of this, almost on a daily basis yeah. since I bought it. So, like, it was the enjoyment of first of all putting it in my cupboard and thinking mm. this is going to sit there for a while. <laughs> yeah. No, Fat no. fucking chance a month later is nearly dead, right? But then when I popped it and started supping on it, and like I said to you earlier, look, this is not well balanced. This is Campbelltown filth, Campbelltown funk, Campbelltown just woo at its best. I really like it. There is that sulfuriness to it, but I also have this just chewy kind of uh, cherry tobacco or something. So I, I can just tell from Arian's look on his face. He's that, not going to like this. This is a no, no, him. Both. Both of us have just gone in our heads, fuck me sideways. Mm-hmm. Um, For the people at home and that are listening through audio, can you just tell them what it is exactly? Well, ABV, A, or do you not want to do that yet? Single cask spring bank in first fill sherry, 58.5%. I, I was going to say, should we just very briefly say, what is a cage bottle, right? Because that yes. might be confusing. Of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hit it up for you. So, um, the, the concept of of why these things have called cage bottles has changed a little bit over time. So back in the day, or I say back in the day, literally only till pre-pandemic, in the Cadenhead shop, there was literally a kind of almost chicken wire cage. And they filled it every day with cask samples of Springbank, Hazelburn, Long Grove. And when he says cask samples, he literally means like... People would get a Valinch and just, oh, let's just fucking, let's do this one. Let's do that one. Yeah. And just randomly draw out of casks that day. Right? And, you know, for those who are watching online, you get these literal kind of like. It's a duty paid stamp. Juicy, yeah, duty paid stamps. It's got the information on it of what the cask is, the cask type, the ABV, the age, etc. Just what is legally required for <laughs> yes. you to have. That is it. <laughs> Written no by. No bells, no whistles. Yeah. Though I like the little tag at the top. Written by hand <laughs> in Biro. And a bar only again, only recently, a barcode with the price for the age bracket on it. And they are so fucking cheap for what you get. So I, I got this last year 
at the um at the festival it's a 14 year old refill burgundy it was 75 pounds for a 14 year old single cask <laughs> spring back it's hilarious how joke. good value they are joke absolutely well again like the, the fact that you know year later still 14 year old first fill sherry 75, 75 pounds, pounds. Yeah. thinking about they're not trying to play you know just let's get the whiskey out there. Let's get it into the hands of people who are drinking it's it. It's exactly know? what Nicole, well, and the whole of Spring went once, right? Yeah, and that's why because, they asked because, you to put your name on it. Yes, but uh, that doesn't stop anyone, right? No, I know. But There's plenty the of these like... even this month on all of the auctions. Of course. With them tipexed out. And in fact, people don't tipex them out. The, the auctions, auctions blank it out. Yeah, I know. Um, Poor form. Yeah. Poor form. Mm hmm. We should name and shame these motherfuckers. I, I think half of them. I want a website dedicated <laughs> own, to just mate. absolutely brutalizing your people own. who flip bottles yeah. of whiskey. <laughs> yeah, next month we'll be coming to me or you to ask to use our accounts. Exactly. <laughs> they just ban him. <laughs> Springbank is obviously a, a very traditional distillery. They take great pride when you go and do the tour, right? That, to show you their computer, which is like a chalkboard. Yes. Right? Yeah. They're many computers. They have chalkboards. They have books. It's, it's none of it. Is actually. Uh, and that, in, to a certain extent, is half of the problem like with the cage bottles they've realized they've got so popular and you are now theoretically limited to one per week per person so obviously for most people it's very unlikely you're going to spend even as a whiskey for aficionado more than a week in campbell unless right? they trust you uh, yeah not. <laughs> we can come back to this again later right but in terms of the principle of it yes no absolutely because listen we witnessed people queuing up yeah before first the thing in the morning open, Jeez, like, and you know what, life. boys? The, the auctions that are live right now, I looked at the dates on the um, cage bottles. They're all after we left. So that just says that people are still going there yeah. to buy and sell. And, you know, you it's know, not like they've been in the collection fairness, for years. Though, you know? Ian and Ari were queuing upside the gift shop for all not, sorts of different not reasons. Not for the cage so, bottles. Yeah, for all sorts, it, of, different it, yeah. reasons, <laughs> bright all sorts of different reasons. Queuing upside bright and fucking early. On that note, <laughs> let's just raise a toast to the lovely ladies that run the gift shop there definitely <laughs> gift shop boys in particular <laughs> i think ari and Ian came back even though they both have fiancés especially <laughs> both uh, came back with a little crush <laughs> angel and kirsty really were, lovely they ladies they were very sweet really they, really cool they were they very patient with us they took care of us exactly. i think they were most yeah. patient with these two fucking standing around chatting <laughs> shite to them all day <laughs> we had a lovely conversation <laughs> about the merits of spring bank as a whiskey yes if you're ever and in about Campbell life Town in Campbell with Aaron Town. or ian and you can't find them they'll be in the gift shop yes. but i mean you know, we, speaking lack with of women risk, half their age <laughs> we will be yeah we were just having a chat like you know it's it's There's amazing you know you want to get you want to go buy a few clothes you got to drive into glasgow you want to go have a mcdonald's you got to go drive an hour and that was going to be so funny listening to them the mcdonald's about what you do crazy. Crazy. Yeah. like yeah oh, sometimes we'll drive and get a domino's <laughs> okay where's the nearest domino's oh, it's only two and a half hours away yeah Man. Christ. yeah <laughs> Christ. Two and a half hour back. Yeah. So if you are going to the distillery, make sure you take some Domino's McDonald's with you. or McDonald's <laughs> with you. McDonald's. Yes. Yeah, McDonald's <laughs> with you. Like, if you do, the girls in the shop might give you an extra <laughs> bottle or something, right? Okay, fair enough. Um But it's, you know, those those cage bottles, it's it's a shame that people sell them because they are they are unique. Yeah. I, d I just I it is what it is, right? Just I know it's pathetic. It's so pathetic, honestly. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm one of the mugs though, because I love them so much. I bought some at auction. And listen, and you know mm. what? And, and I'm the same, mate. I will happily take a bottle of. If you don't understand the value of something that you're holding, just fuck off. Kindly step aside. I'll take it off your hand. Yeah. If you want some money in your bank account over opening one of these bottles and sharing it as we are today? Just, just give it. To I, I might fucking crack my one of these as soon as I get home, mate. It's so it's, worth it, mate. It's so oh good. My God. It's so good. And I'm really excited, actually. Dude. <laughs> I, I've, I've <laughs> get this through it. You've been stunning. destroying that. This so, Arian, sorry, you're not someone who's particularly sort of sulfur. No, but, I'm, you don't quite, like I'm quite sensitive to sulfur. I right. think, like, I can definitely pick it up quite, quite early on. Do you but find there it is, in this? I do. But it's still amazing. So good. And, right? yeah, it is. And that's the thing. It's it's one of those where you've got to embrace it. There's sometimes with the kill Karens you get, you've got to embrace it a little bit. Right. And and this is one of those. No, I agree. I definitely agree. I just think like what is, what is not to like? It is it but it would you agree that it's not particularly well balanced? It's kind of like off on oh, one it's, side. It's it's not, but I don't so I, this this to me, and I think I'm also fairly sulfur intolerant. 
Right. This to me is um honey glazed ham hock. It's a really thick that piece is, of ham. Wow, that's a great note. Like it, you know, it's not some fucking cheap supermarket, like full of water shit. It's a proper. No, you've like, been slow braising this. Yes. Yeah, for... it's a big old thick slice of it. I'm so susceptible to advertising. I'm getting it, mate. Oh. Tell me, where is this? Is it's it Iberico ham? Tonight. Is it? Is it to tell me where's yeah. the pig come from? <laughs> no, I don't think it is. I said I think it's like a you know like you, a you roast go, pork loin. Yeah, like a yeah, big no, old you like you know when you get like a gammon joint and you stick you you put a bunch of. I don't even, I, you know what? I don't even really eat pork, but it sounds so enticing what you're saying now because I'm getting it from this. Yeah, it is. It's rich. It's fatty. It's oily. It's yes. Yeah. It's, it's sweet but savory at the same time. There is, I know what you mean, and, and and I think what I'm most resonating with your tasting note there is that kind of idea of a glaze. Mm. This kind of very savory, kind of almost umami flavor yes. that is covered by this glazing of of just sweet tantalizing oh sherriedness it's yeah it's good right yeah and it's 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 got the kind of funk and dunnagey notes on the side as uh, well mm. um you know a little bit of furniture polish as well from the kind of sherry the old school sherry right um yeah 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 it I reminds love me very much of the whiskey baron spring Bank. i know what you mean it really does it re- you know what? It reminds me more of the other cask of Spring Bank that we had that we didn't bottle and that we sold on. Um, because the one that we bottled wasn't as sulfured. Right. But I know what you mean. There is definitely almost like a burnt fruit element in here that yeah. I can kind of uh, join up with our Spring Bank. But it's amazing, isn't it? 14 years in fresh sherry, you know, again, we talk about, you know, w- wood qualities and what it like Spring Bank have that just mm. the yeah money right? i love that i love that we were like don't don't chase the cage bottles or car sample sorry buy this <laughs> and then we all get this it's dram, so good and then man. we get Look, so excited arguing that it's so good i'm just saying like is it worth 200 pounds an auction yes it is you should buy this for 200 pounds an auction <laughs> to you <laughs> correct no and to that- me it is but for most people it's not and i can completely understand that i completely do and that's these are the people that I'm talking to when I say Campbelltown Lock. Yeah. It's kind of like Springbank almost has this like it's got a cult following, but yes. it also has this kind of old school following of people who are annoyed at the distillery and kind of yeah. almost blaming the distillery for being successful. And I kind of feel like look, you may have been here first. Maybe you're an old school lad, you know, maybe you just got involved in whiskey before it was cool or whatever. I don't know, whatever. You've been around for a minute. And now Springbank is unaffordable to you. You can have a piss and a moan about that if you want, but it's not going to get you anywhere, is it? So I just don't really understand the purpose, you know? Just crack on with some of the other stuff. Equally, I would say, as somebody who obviously works in the industry and somebody who would spend a reasonable amount of money on whiskey, I don't drink whiskey all that often. I drink whiskey most mainly in this room with you guys, to be honest <laughs> with you. But when I do drink whiskey, I, I like, you know, every now and then cracking something special. And I'm happy to spend the money on that. And so it doesn't faze me. This sort of thing. And I'm really looking forward to trying your boat. I've already had a little sample before we started because I was clucking. But it's just, this is the sort of thing I'm so excited about. These yeah. specialist releases. And ultimately, Arian, I appreciate what you mean, but you can't get Cabletown Lock age statement in Burgundy. Not yet, anyway. I mean, whenever it's released, I'll buy it. I'll buy all of it. But yeah. at the minute, it's not available, right? It's not available 14-year-olds in fresh sherry. It's It's not available across the board with different sort of renditions. So I think if you do want to dive really sort of into the rabbit hole and get fully involved in Spring Bank, unfortunately, you've got to to drive some people now. You've got to drive (laughs) drive there, or you've got to open up your wallet, and you can't be sour about that. Well, yeah, because also the society is closed down now, so that's completely shut off to people, new people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and at the end of the day, if you do drive there, you're going to spend couple of hundred quid in fuel if you're based in the uk but compared to the price of buying one of those on uh, one of those online well you're gonna have an amazing trip you're have well. an amazing the trip experience yeah, yeah the absolutely experience you will have worth you're there, yeah and even if you don't do the full eat sleep dram repeat tour they've got just the barley to bottle tour they've yep. got some simpler tours you know i appreciate you can people just commenting on some of this tour, stuff yeah. this isn't an everyday experience you know you don't understand it and look i appreciate not everyone wants to spend it's 800 not. pounds i get that but at the same time 
I wouldn't say that whiskey is for the every man, you know? <laughs> I really wouldn't. I think it is quite a premium thing. It's quite a luxurious thing. It's something that we are very privileged to have as part of our lives. And I think, you know, you can't, you can't be sour that other people like what you like and you've got to pay a bit more for it, can you? Like, just fucking okay, I'm, get on with it. I'm going to agree and I'm going to disagree. I think you've got, you know, there, there are people, you know, I I kind of disagree with with like ronnie cox when he was like you know whiskey in back in the in the 60s used to be you know a week's wages or whatever to get a, a half decent bottle and nowadays you can go and get a bottle for like a, an hour's wage a two hours wage right mm -hmm. um and so whiskey got too cheap and should get more expensive again i i kind of fundamentally disagree with that because i disagree with that as well um you've got to be able to have every man's whiskey for people to get into whiskey in the first place correct agreed and that's what this does yes and this is the thing this is what i'm saying whiskey should be accessible yes, yes. there should be something from every distillery whether it's a named thing or a blend or something that's unnamed and kind of secretly oh this is like you said it's glenmorangie but it's not really you know, we can't say it's glenmorangie you know cool i don't care there should be those sorts of things out there accessible for the every man you know, all the time, definitely. However, let's talk about output at Springbank. Okay, they have a capacity for seven hundred and fifty thousand liters, which three is quarters of a million, which is not a lot. Which is fuck all in the grand scheme. I, mean, I know it sounds like a lot, three quarters of a million liters of alcohol. Well, it's a lot of alcohol. Glenfiddich is what sixteen million. Glenfiddich is twenty one. Twenty one million. Okay, there you go. Yeah. So, like, come on, let's take a fucking step back here. They are competing with brands like Glenfiddich, like Macallan, 15 million liters per annum, you know? And so- the They're not even they're, using that full They're capacity. competing with them, correct. And this is what I was just about to say. So they have capacity for 750. Glen Gyle, who produces Kilkerran, have a capacity for 750,000 liters. So they have a capacity across the board of 1.5 million liters, one-tenth of that of Macallan. They actually produce between the two of them 600,000 liters per year. That's the most recent figures we've been given when we were on our trip, okay? So there are what, like 40%, 42% of their capacity? Yep. And yet they are still one of the biggest brands the world over, you know? There was, there was, was that palette of, of Springbank 21s and all that stuff that was stolen. Oh know? my God, there that was, was hilarious. Like, yep. There's all sorts of things that are going on within Springbank that shows just how desirable it is. You know, we talk about McCallum being this kind of. Yeah, there was a lorry on drag. the M25 or somewhere that was, I think, heading overseas. Well, it was international ship. Um, and it was huge, probably, huge it was probably lorry, bonded, lorry, mate. It was right? probably yeah, all huge bonded Arctic goods. Arctic lorry. Yep. They cut a tiny hole out. They knew exactly the side, what they were looking and for. All they took out of all the whiskey on board was a spring bank. That's it. One big you know? pallet. Bosh. So, uh, yeah. But this is the thing. You can't then, <laughs> like with all of that happening and you're saying, oh, well, the secondary market is this. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Are, you, are you dim? Like the demand versus the supply. That is how these things go. There was a guy that commented, I think, on our YouTube today. I don't know if you saw it. Uh, about how th he thinks they're doing it on purpose. He was kind of saying bullshit. Th th they don't. They're not sort of being authentic and keeping their price down because they care. They're doing it because it knows it drives demand. You know. Um, but but again, that's such a like th those sorts of comments don't make sense to me. Like, and, I, and I've spoken to people about this before. Like, people a lot of people think that Springbank should up their prices because this will get rid of the secondary market. And my answer to that is. It's still going to be the same people drinking. Well, there's still the if same you output. put it up, okay. So I buy this in auction, or I buy this in auction now. So you saying what, two hundred, two hundred fifty? Yeah, something like that. Okay, or I can buy it in the shop currently for seventy five pounds. Now I'm going to drink this if I buy it at seventy five pounds, as you quite clearly see. A cage bottle for everyone listening at home. Or I'm going to drink it if I buy it for two hundred, two hundred fifty pounds. The only difference is how quickly I will drink it, what sort of occasion I will drink it on, how flamboyant and sort of frivolous I am with the liquid, right? Yep. 75 pounds. I'm very happy to give you all a hefty pour today. Not be too precious. Crack on. If it's 250 pounds, I'd be a little bit more sparing, <laughs> right? But that's the only difference. It's getting drunk by me one way or a fucking another. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, the same people are drinking it. The only difference is there's not going to be the sort of flippers at the first stage making money on the bottles. 
But the bottles are going to be sold for the same price. They're going to be drunk by the same people. It doesn't make any fucking difference. No, I think you will still see, still see a percentage of those flippers fork out, and it will just push it up again. That much more, maybe because of the maybe, demand. Maybe it, it doesn't solve anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know maybe, what I mean? Maybe, like maybe. But I just think like the people being remains. annoyed at the distillery is so stupid. You should be annoyed at the people buying and flipping. Yeah, I get that. But being annoyed at the distillery for keeping their prices affordable, it's like, what are you on about? Think- Again, like you travel all the way to the distillery to be able to pick up. Yeah, with those sorts of people, Jake, you're not going to win, are you? No matter what Springbank does, whether they put their prices up or keep it fair, they're still going to be a bit yeah. bitter because they ha- can't get a bottle. And think- that's the problem, isn't it? It's just it's people being bitter. Co- it's correct. people like yeah. if you it haven't is. been, though, I think that's the thing. Like if you haven't been to the distillery, you don't really get the sense of the romantic element and the fact that they are generally trying to produce whiskey that people can drink and try yeah they genuine once you go you realize they genuinely care about people opening bottles and i would say that if you can't afford those bottles then get five six seven eight of your friends and buy a bottle together and then that's such a good shout out that's something that people don't talk about enough oh i can't afford to buy it Split it. Split the fucking thing. Correct. Yeah. yeah. I think people in the if you look at it as um, opposed to buying a dram at a bar group. How do. much? You, how much more are you paying at a bar? Yeah. You know, people in in the Facebook group. It's all about Springbank. Um, they do do that a lot, especially because now a lot of people don't. You know that that are society members and they still don't get a bottle. They all you know group together. They send samples out to each other. They pay yeah. a little bit. They do swaps. And this is the thing that great. I love about the community, Ryan Springbank. Like we can complain about people flipping bottles and people complaining and da da da. What I love about the community behind Springbank is equally you've got that. You've got the they look after each other. Who, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Who look after each other. Yeah. I got a bottle. You didn't go. Let's crack it, mate. And, and I think we're all quite like that. You know, and you cracking your don't twenty ask year old for long any money. Row. They just here you go, mate. Send it. Just fucking because enjoy that's what it, it's man. about. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. No. It's um. It is an interesting one. Um, I don't know. I'll be interested to see how long this carries on for with Springbank. You know, I don't know your thoughts on that. Of like, this has well, got to drop off at some no, point. No, right? no, I, the I, market I totally as a whole disagree. has been you, slowing for a while, but the Springbank market as a whole, and other brands have been charging forward. Yeah, I, I, I 100% disagree. I, I, I speak to a lot of people who are like, oh, we're heading towards another whiskey lock. There's going to be a big price correction. I massively, massively disagree. So, India just became the number two market for scotch whiskey after the uk china is still down at like fourth behind france and the us there is a massive middle class there whose wealth is growing very fast (laughs) and what is happening what people i think you know don't see is they're looking at purely a kind of uk perspective as a country we're getting poorer compared to the rest of the world if Springbank. McAllen, whoever it is, can sell their bottles at whatever price to people in India or China. Do you think they care about people in the UK? Of course they fucking no, don't. Well, not. most of Springbank goes out internationally in anyway. Yes, right? exactly. Believe, yeah. So all they'll do is 99% of it goes there and we'll be left with whatever we can afford. <laughs> God, those ballots will be a bit sad, won't they? Yeah. <laughs> it's hard enough to get a bottle at the oh, moment. Oh, there'll be a lot of a... sour people, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I, I might join them if yeah, it turns think, to that. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> because that, listen, we, you know, between the sort of four of us, at least, you know, we've been quite lucky and we have some friends that are part of the society. We can always n- normally get Find something. Find someone who has know? something to But you're try, right, yeah. in when it gets to that point, Good fucking luck finding something, yep. and that's when I guess yeah we we start complaining. Yeah, you want the tricks? I mean, I you know at that point I might start complaining, but at that point you might have to move. You know, if you want to start buying Springbank, you might have to move to a different country, get a different job somewhere, or right? just move to Campbelltown and just uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. spend one day a week going down to the shop and stuck it up. If we, <laughs> you know, well, and when, when, and if not together, obviously, but you know, looking to move up to Scotland, yeah, a three hour drive to Campbelltown. <laughs> Fuck yeah, what a cool weekend away. Hey, listen, yeah, the right. girls do it for a Domino's, mate. I'd do it for a bottle of Springer <laughs> any day. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know what I'd rather have. Exactly, mate. Exactly. Uh, you know, a cold Domino. Anyway. A mighty Meesey or a... Or a trip to the shop to see Angel. Oh, I don't know. It's a tough one for you, Ian, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling you out. I feel bad for the girls now. If they're watching this at home, I'm sorry, ladies. We're brutalizing the boys. You were very, you were lovely. <laughs> you were very patient. Very patient with all of us. Exactly. What do we reckon, guys? Where are we at? Are we enjoying? I just, oh, I lo- loving I, this, I'm, mate. I'm savoring this Absolutely as much as I can. This. I think one thing we haven't mentioned about our experience 
um, in Campbelltown is the, well, you may have done, I popped out for a quick second, is the warehouse tasting in warehouse number five? No, yeah. So that's where we were getting on to. I think right. it was warehouse number three, actually. Maybe mate. three. You know, yeah. Right. But yeah. So, so the, that the was second a full highlight, day right? was Glengyle. Yep. Springbank tasting in the warehouse. Yep. And the blending experience. Right. <laughs> Yeah, we had a little extra something as well on that day, but yeah. Yes, I know, I know, I know, for sure. I don't want to make two people too jealous, but yeah, no. The, so the Kill Karen <laughs> it's, tour, awesome. It's online. The new make, so interesting. <laughs> and then going into that Springbank warehouse tour, warehouse tasting, I should say. I loved Arian and Thank you. like you turned into a little boy again. I felt like <laughs> I was bringing my son on his first <laughs> distillery tour. It was honestly one of the most special moments for me because of your excitement. And for anyone at home who hasn't watched our, our, our tours and any of our content over on our Whiskey Baron channel, which is where we've released all of this content, Arian got his first chance at uh, using a Valinch, which... Would it be fair to say that was probably the highlight of your your weekend? It was a big moment for or me. the week, brother. Yeah. I was I was really hoping to to use it anyway, and then <laughs> I was building up the courage to ask, and I knew that you were going to ask for me if I didn't ask, but I was there ready, and I summoned up the courage <laughs> and um, helped that I had one dram first, and then went in, and and obviously for me it's just there's something magical about tasting the whiskey that you've pulled out <laughs> of the cask, yeah. and that's just. It was the long, long row, right? 1994, 28-year-old long row. It was my favorite dram of the week. Uh, I think there is obviously a romantic element of it being a birthier dram for me. And obviously we were there. You were drawing it out of the cat. It was all a very special moment. But from a, a whiskey quality level, it was sensational. Like 28-year-old. Lo- I've, I've never seen a long row so old. I don't know if they've even bought. I, don't, I have no idea. Never seen anything like it. And that was preceded by a 23 year old hazelbell which i know you two went nuts for yes and then straight after it was a 32 year old spring bank which again oldest spring bank i've yeah. tried which, which was one of the casks that went into the last year's yes uh, spring they had just 30. bottled it because it was getting too close to the 40 percent, wasn't it yeah yeah just exceptional whiskeys really just wow I, I mean so hard to choose a favorite yeah, I mean the the hazel burn, just delicious, earthy sherry, just oozing quality from like nose to finish. The Springbank, you know, again like beautiful, rich, robust, and then the long row, incredibly tropical, and like a far less kind of ashy and much lighter peat than you would expect. Like just mind blowing, all three of them. Yeah. No, I agree. I really do. And and again, I think that was kind of for me the moment where I started really just falling back in love all over again. Mm. Because, you know, the first full day, it was an awesome day. And and obviously going around the distillery was made but like when you're in the warehouse and you really that's that's the highlight for me you of have any to trip. take a moment. Just to pinch yourself and be like And I did. And for me it's different, you know, I'm behind a camera, so I'm kind of it's kind of hard to explain, but I'm I'm living this through the lens, so it's a bit different, right? You guys obviously experience a bit more sort of, you know, presently, I would say. But I did, I had to put the camera down, and I had that spring bank in my hand, and I just had to walk off for a minute and just appreciate what the fuck was going on. Because <laughs> yeah. it's, it's crazy. Crazy. Right? And you, yeah. you really need to just... And that whiskey, the spring bank was nearly as old as you, sure. The long uh, road was yeah. as old as yeah, me. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, this nearly. Is, uh, yeah. Fucking serious stuff. And yeah. again, we say this all the time, how easily we take these sorts of drowns for, for granted. But you need to, as you say, pinch yourself and just be present with it for a moment and realize what, what it is you're drinking. This is the Burgundy. Yeah. This is um, buttered Irish soda bread. <laughs> toasted. <laughs> toasted soda bread with just some butter on it. Do you know what I mean? So interest, interestingly, when you were talking about the sulfur on, on your 14-year-old cherry, yeah. I get more sulfur on this. <sighs> there is I sulfur in sulfur it, but here. you get more. Yeah, yeah more. Yeah. yeah. Same. For me, I, I get... That's so interesting. Okay. So this, that's interesting where our tolerances come in, because I get... For, for me, this is a kind of... Uh, there's, there's some burn... There's some kind of match strike notes, mm-hmm. right? But then behind it, you get this kind of toasted 
like strawberry coolie kind of behind it. Palette. Or on the nose. Even on, on the, the nose. nose. I just get this really sort of Yeah. And to feel everybody in toast, at home. Brown bread, soda bread, spring bank burgers, yeah. soda bread, is toasted Jake's with butter. Probably favourite. One of your favourite So strands, I was actually right? going to bring the original Springbank 12 Burgundy today. And then Ian said, oh, I've got a Burgundy's cage bottle. I'll bring, you know, and I, I've gone through so many bottles of that 12 Burgundy. I've only got four left. It is one of my favourite drams ever. I'm safe. The fact that you've gone through so many and you've got four left says it all. <laughs> oh, dude, I've killed. Yeah, I'd say probably at least five bottles of that I've killed off already. Yeah, no, it's it's a serious dram. It's, it's, it's cool. It's really, really cool. Uh, and I was going to bring it today just as a point of like, look, we had a great experience, but also there's some stuff from a time gone by and you need to look at that as well. But obviously, you know, when you're spoiled for choice, I don't want to open bottles unnecessarily. So we'll save that one. But but yeah, Burgundy or even not even just Burgundy wine casks, red wine casks as a whole, when it comes to peated spirit, mm. I think it works really well, particularly with Long Row, but also with the Spring Bank Peat. It just brings this wonderful roundness to a dram yep and the spring bank 12 burgundy was the first dram that i tried where i experienced that at such a top level that it really kind of brought me into that's probably my favorite style of whiskey peated whether it's lightly or heavily peated in some sort of red wine cask whether it's exclusively matured or finished i just i love that style and this is a, a wonderful wonderful example uh you've got that fruitiness I definitely get the sulfur, but it's so interesting that you guys think this is way more sulfur. This is yeah. like drinking it on a volcano for me. That's like, so it's interesting. That sulfur. It's... I get this like really wonderful buttered toast thing on the, you've, on the nose. You've had this before, right? I have, yeah. yeah. And it's it's the same. It's it's interesting to compare them as well because, yeah, this one for me is so much stronger on the sulfur. Yes. And it's just, and but it doesn't detract so much from the because sometimes sulfur can just take it away yes and it's just like i don't enjoy this whereas you know it's what? still enjoyable. i know what you mean the back palette mm. is very sulfured but the nose on that it stands out so much more the nose on the sherry stands out so much more as just being this absolute sulfur bomb so and that's the thing it doesn't for me it doesn't that's so uh, interesting. which is me so either. weird yeah very interesting it's so rich the sherry one for me it is yeah but it, you know the other one, you can smell the sulfur on it. So you get the kind of the struck match on it straight away. Um, whereas this, it, it, there's a hint of background, but it's it, it's it's really minimal. And yeah, that's got it's, my gum powder and my musket. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Man. It's um, it's that's super interesting. Like the, I think it's it, it's even more interesting. The kind of three of us seem a little bit more aligned on yeah, it yeah, than, yeah, yeah, than yeah. you do, right? Really weird. I was just thinking about what Steve was saying about the um, taking a moment. And I think these last two drams transport you back to Springbank. Right. And, that, and, that's, and that's a crazy feeling. That's and, where the magic starts. And, and then you just immediately feel like you're back in that distillery trying the drams mm. from the casks. Mm. And, and that makes just such a huge difference in terms of your enjoyment of it. Yeah, there is so much to be said about drinking certain distilleries liquids in their warehouses and then continuing your journey at home and you know continuing the journey of love with them you have so much more of a you do with them, you yeah. really do yeah it, it, it definitely builds um on that appreciation for the distillery yeah. um but uh yeah this i uh, know this is definitely dude yeah don't know how you, I, i'm now getting like cherries and you know berries whereas this yeah the, the volcanoes the yes is is definitely as chewy cherries yes yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah 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 now going on to this that's like sulfur through and through for me i just, I, I obviously love sulfur. you love it <laughs> yeah. bathe me in it <laughs> yeah no this is right on my street and and you know it because whilst we were there, obviously they didn't have any burgundy or any even red wine casks. And nope. I was a little disappointed. I did shed a tear quietly whilst Angel and Kirsty weren't looking. Um, I will be traveling back up promptly as <laughs> soon as I hear anyone saying, oh, they've got a red wine burgundy. I will be uh, driving all those many miles and uh, just to pick up the wine, I'd be happy with that. Definitely. 
I feel the same way about port. Once they've got a port there, I oh, think we man, have to I, just I would just be straight bang, up bang, the port. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That that Springbank 13, 14 port words, like from a few years ago. I, I want to get my. There's a Springbank 15 Society bottling that was in port as well. I'd love to try that. Um, I, and I think that's one of the great things about Springbank. You know, not only have you got the three distilleries in one, but they do have, you know, obviously a good wood policy. They're bringing in so many different great, I'd say types. great wood policy, I would say. Um, I, I, I'm going to, so I'm going to give them an A rather than A plus, okay. right? Um, <laughs> it's only just now, right, that they're bringing in different types of sherry. Um, okay. You know, it's always Spring like, rank. Yeah. You know what I found really interesting about Spring Rank is that they, they, um, they don't use um, season casks, do they? Or they do use season casks. Uh, everyone does, right? Yeah, but I think you guys, especially uh, and myself, thought that they didn't, right? On such a large level, they will have to use some season yeah. casks. For sure. But during the podcast, you both were very surprised on camera that they did. Uh, uh, what I was surprised at is the fact that they kind and of, that's because from what they say they seem to exclusively use season casks. Correct, yeah. and because on previous sure podcasts and, and chats we've had, you know, we've always kind of you know, but like the reason. So the reason I, I'm, I'm surprised by that, for example, Stevie, is like the reason you get these sulfur notes is because they will dry the casks with sulfur candles, right? Yeah. And so, in my mind, you season a cask. I don't see the need. To dry it, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, why wouldn't you use? Well, they cast? wouldn't, right? It just, it doesn't, yeah. it just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. And so, my mind, I was like, they must have a very good percentage of the casks being kind of traditional. Sure, what you know? No, but you would, wouldn't you? With, with a distillery like Springbank, you would like to think you would like to have that romantic story of you know they they do everything how they did hundreds of years uh, ago, and they still use you know um, sherry casks, you know that have had sherry in them for decades but i think yeah as i say i was surprised that they they st they use season casks yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and enough. yeah it, the, the sherry but the they sherry have liquid such so a good, good control over that it's miguel and martinez I, right i think so but I, all, all i was gonna say is that's why it's a rather than a plus because i think historically it's always been portwood sherry wood because the computer at springbank did not record <laughs> the information mm. right and you didn't have barcodes on the cask. Nowadays, you do. And I, as a mm. cask geek... Arian, hold tight. We'll pop that properly just to get a clip of it. I, I want to make okay. sure... You were so popular last time. I want you to pop it again. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> as, on sorry, Ian. as a cask geek, I would love to just have a little bit more information. You know, where does your wine come from? What, you know, is it... When you say sherry, is it Oloroso? Let's I'm get some provenance let's, in there. Let's get a bit Definitely. more provenance. Definitely. Yeah. You know they what? Do, no? Well, no, no, they don't. They don't. You know what? When we took well, we our know casks out of from, there, but... not only was it a, an absolute chore to get the ta casks out, and I understand why, obviously, they want to hold on to every single last drop. Fair play. Uh, you know, no judgments. However, I agree. I think that when it comes to provenance, there's no harm in sharing. Just a bit of information. You know, even if you're doing it in a sneaky way, like the the guys do at Bricladi, MRC, you know, yeah. you can't can't label everything clearly, but you can put some. No one's going to be able to replicate uh, it anyway. You know, so you know, what the fuck? It, in, in, in the past, I think it was done genuinely because there was a lack of information. People have forgotten by the time stuff went into bottle. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that it was more the fact that people didn't give a fuck. And people didn't give, yeah, people absolutely. Didn't care. People didn't have the time, or the, you know. No, fuck. but I think you're right. I think there was a lack of, like, you know jotting down information and recording yeah. it like now, now people do let's let's fucking hear it sure. right. well, i would yeah. love sure. to hear i agree it. i agree i agree with that yeah we've we've enjoyed a good bit of springer should we crack on with something else arian sorry to stop you there What's i saw problem? you reaching for your long row i just think popping a bottle it deserves a bit of you know a little bit of a ceremony here on the uncut and unfiltered podcast you're about to pop what is it an 11 year That's old fair. long row red yeah i am indeed and i've got a quite good story as well about let's hear it about it's getting this tawny bottle. Port. So it's the it's the Tawny Port one, the one that we tried um at the end Upcom of the tasting. Upcoming, upcoming exactly. Which was my favorite of that tasting. The favorite of the tasting. Boom. Um and so this bottle we actually managed to get because we saw someone on Facebook, I'm not sorry, not Facebook, on Instagram actually complain about the label. So they posted a shot saying 
um damaged where, label or there is a damaged label on this is that the top of the label that i'm looking at that that is the damage and on the back <laughs> so I don't if any of you at home see. have damaged long row bottles in the future <laughs> yep. don't contact Ari and contact me i'll pay you more <laughs> don't listen to him even better than that they so when we messaged we messaged the guy on instagram and said what what are you sending it back to the shop because he, he wrote a rant he's really, really, he was really upset shocking about so annoyed. this damage I, well, I, I, know, I know who this is yes now but okay interesting i should have done the same <laughs> so then we messaged the shop and said you know you're getting a bottle back that's apparently been damaged and we're willing to buy it at retail <laughs> arian is fucking right in there i love it and um they i will said, drive up tomorrow <laughs> i'll meet you outside <laughs> they said absolutely i was like because we're gonna open it so we actually don't, don't mind this shit that there's a slight small rip on the label yeah so did you pull pay uh retail rp yeah paid full okay. full retail yeah. because why wouldn't why, you why wouldn't yeah, you? Like, full retail like, was what, like 65 pounds was it it was 75 75 Whoa. but um with a ripped label shame about that deary me it's, for, it's very tough and it and it ruins the taste actually course, yeah, <laughs> so exactly, if you yeah. do have these rips <laughs> there's nowhere near there. as good is it <laughs> yeah for every rip there's just a percentage just, of yeah, the flavor just, just comes right just off. less wet paper notes exactly the... <laughs> so cool. should we should we open this bad boy let's now? do it man long okay. row 11 year old tawny port cask matured 57.5 whop and of course our good friend arian here from uncut and unfiltered popping it for us get a nice good big pop there Ooh, that was nice. That was, that nice was tasty. Pop. That was good. I'm going to pass it over to Ian to pour, though, because oh. I will definitely drop it. What? Careful with him. He's got a heavy no. So Long Row is a favourite of yours, Aaron. Is that... No. no? It okay. was not never a favourite until we went to the distillery. And I was all about Hazelburn Springbank. And I thought... I He's on the other end that. of the spectrum, dude. I love that. It, I, for me, it was a little bit too ashy. Yep. And I was like, and I think there was a few that I tried of the red before, and I was like, it doesn't, but I'm a convert. <laughs> well, Arian, thank you so much for bringing it, for popping yeah, it today. Thank it's you not for so bad. You're an absolute That's gen. That's awesome. It's thank lovely you. to see you all again. It's so uh, lovely recamp- recanting our, our, our experiences and, and sort of, yeah. I think we could probably stay here all day and tell stories Definitely. because there were so many on the trip. Um. It was just, yeah, it was such a magical trip for me. It really, really was. It will it will stay with me for a long time and probably until I go back to Campbelltown. Mm. But it was just such a lovely place. The people were lovely. I felt, I, I keep saying to everyone that I speak to you, what have you been up to lately? I tell them about Campbelltown. I've nearly sold some a family member on buying a flat in Campbelltown. <laughs> I sold <laughs> it so well, right? Um, you just felt like family straight away. Mm, everyone yeah. made you feel so welcome. Um, I said to you before we left, Stevie, this is going to be like our trip to Ireland. Yes, and you, you were did. kind of like a bit. I don't know, maybe I a bit was, unsure about that I because our trip to Isla was so special, for right? sure. Yeah, yeah. How uh, can you top Isla, right? Right. You know, and this is the thing: we got off the boat in Isla, and one Stevie and I noticed straight away one of the things just so weird as you're driving around and everyone's waving. <laughs> everyone's yeah, it's the Isla wave. It's the Isla wave, man. Everyone's so friendly, and this is the thing for me. Like my whole family is Irish. It reminds me of home. You know, mm. you could be walking down the road in Ireland, you'd be on the bus or on the train or whatever. You talk to somebody, say hello, because we talk to each other. And it's just a nice way to be. And you try and do that in London and people look at you as if you've got <laughs> two fucking heads. You know, you just get to, get out of my fucking personal space, man. So <laughs> just trying to be friendly, just saying hello, you know. And this is the thing. You arrive in Campbelltown, exactly that, Stevie. You feel like a true Campbelltonian, you know. You are part of the furniture. You just, You've only been there for 12 hours and all of a sudden you know everyone. You're talking to people as if they're friends. That you, well, we had, we had <laughs> these a... people are just hosting you. They're paid to look after you, but they feel they're friends, you know? Yeah. It's so lovely. Like, it really does make a difference. I mean, you know, not age appropriate. We had that schoolgirl come up to us, right? Whilst we're walking around on the walk-in tour being like, I want to be on your TikTok. It's like, we're talking about booze. <laughs> but this is it, man. But... People do. They're just that much more like willing to interact with you. And I love that, you know? We I went on a few walks with Triggs by myself. Went on a few. I, I ended up talking to some locals. Of course. You know, yeah. you do. You, you just get a real feel for the whole place. You can mm. bet Anywhere you go in Campbelltown, whether it be you go to a pub in the evening, a walk with your dog in the morning, whatever it may be, to supermarket, you could probably put aside an hour or two just to chat to someone. Mm. 
you know, and I love easy. that. Easy. I love Mate, that. an hour or two, that's light work. That's, <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a quick conversation. It was Isla we were talking about, I think it was earlier today or yesterday, about, you know, maybe going door to door and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we said, <laughs> you would have to put a year aside for that. Because you bet, you know, you're betting bonds on it. You, you'd turn up at someone's front door, they'd invite you in. Yeah. You'd be there for tea, yeah. you'd be there for lunch, you'd be there for dinner. And that was what was so lovely about the Springbank Tour. We had these wonderful ladies, and I'm sorry, all of the names are, are, are escaping me at this present moment. We did say a bit of a thank you at the end of our content and the Whiskey Baron channel, but we had these wonderful ladies in the house cooking for us and, and there, you know, just making sure we were taken care of. But in the evening, once the meal was done, they were so... They, sitting down joining us getting involved in the conversation i yeah. love that you know yes. especially like yeah. four young enough guys she could have quite easily just been like i don't want to talk to these fucking idiots like you know and we were all a bit rowdy as well we had a, <laughs> a skin full of whiskey you know she sat down she wanted to get to know she wanted to, and not because she had to That's she it. was she was clocked off she, she wanted didn't have to, to hang around yeah like, she's just yeah. so friendly and they were all exactly the same that's the thing you, you know? can't put a price on on the the fact that we did that eat sleep jam repeat yeah the the fact that when you were there you felt like you were home yes you were talking and chatting with people that you wouldn't normally get to sit and chat with yeah yeah and and it was almost like traveling it was almost like if you've ever been, you know, you've gone traveling and you you just speak to the like what it's you really see as a local community people. Yes, yeah, and 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 that for me was what was priceless about the entire trip. I think yeah. if it wasn't for that, and that includes the people even at Springbank in the gift shop, Nicole, mm -hmm. all the team that we interacted with, if it wasn't for that, the trip wouldn't have been half of what it was for me anyway. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we talk about the value of the trip. And as we said, okay, let's take out the accommodation and the food. So if you just look at, just look at the two warehouse experiences, the two, sorry, the two warehouse tastings, the two distillery experiences, the tour of Campbelltown, the blending your own whiskey, and then the people, that's worth 800 pounds all day long. Mm. And, and more than 800. I'd pay more than 800 pounds for that alone. Oh, forget the accommodation, quid forget the food. Just to go there Boom. and chat to those people yeah, and hang lovely. out with them. Yeah. All of them. It'd all of them. Made to feel welcome. I loved it. It was great. It's so special. Um, and this, the long way red, 11 years old. So good, right? Bacon, bacon, bacon for me. Yeah? Yes. I know it's what you mean. It's so delicious. There is an yeah. element of sort of almost like uh, salt in there as well. Like Yes. But there's the, you still get the fruit from the port as well, and it's mm. it's it's quite a it's a dense fruitiness that that but it complements the bacon so well. You know, you go to like a hotel sometimes, and they've got their <laughs> like kind of forest fruit mix, right? right? It's a bit like that. I know what you mean. Yeah, fair play. I, I thought you were going to say the buffet melon. Do you remember that tasting note? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I keep going back. It's, it's next door to the it's buffet next melon. Door, yeah. Next door to the a buffet melon. A bit of melon has fallen into the bacon tray. <laughs> That's what's happened. Do you know that? Do you know that tasting note? <laughs> yeah. Just that little bit of melon has just yeah. slid in. I've had it once. The, uh, yes, the <laughs> and I'll never forget. <laughs> the Holiday Inn buffet. I love the long row. I'm still like just, I just, I'm romantic about this burgundy. Yeah, you're really lingering on to it's that, aren't you? It's so just, woo! I'm so shocked at that, to be honest. Oh my I love. Like, the, for me, the long row and the sherry uh, just stand out. Absolute standouts. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I, I am very happy I have a bottle of that Springbank cage at home. Good, man. I'm so glad you got to try it then. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, was, oh, I mean, that bottle's going to go open at some point, right? It's <laughs> just like, it's just straight wet, away. Right? <laughs> Fair enough, man. Fair enough. No one's tipexing out your name. No Ooh. chance. <laughs> so what did oh. you bring back from the trip then? I think I've got the same Springbank Sherry and yep. um, I've got a Hazelburn 15 Sherry. Nice. And that, That's what you're I most mean, excited about, right? Uh, yeah. That's what you kind of went for. It, I mean, it's I lost a bottle of a Hazelburn, Hazelburn 15 to Jake on the rugby once. So, um, <laughs> oh, yeah. A yeah, very tough. small that bottling was a tough batch. Bet, mate. Don't that was don't a very drink, small don't drink and gamble. That's and you know what? Say. He made the bet when my team England were up 
So uh, uh, yeah, I made a bet with odds against me. <laughs> I was confident. <laughs> Ireland, no, I think I was more confident. I was like, "Yeah, sure, mate." <laughs> Ireland come through, man. I tell you what, the Six Nations is on as well at the minute. And it is. We're, we're playing tomorrow. Yep. I haven't watched the games today, but they are playing tomorrow. Oh, sorry, no, it's Friday. Ireland playing on Sunday. Right. Okay. Yeah. Got Scotland, France tomorrow. Yeah. I'm excited about that. Sorry. Was chat, it a 15 or a 14? It Which? was the 2021 release. 15. 15. It was 15 year old, Hazelburn, yeah. Sherry Oak. Yeah. And the funny thing about that, sorry, it's not funny. It's kind of funny to me. I didn't even like it as much as you liked it. <laughs> I'll oh, take you back. Yes. <laughs> that is We had brutal. opened two of each. I opened two bottles of that release and Stevie opened two bottles of that release. And I think you opened your Hazelburn, Hazelburn 15. Hazelburn, yeah. I'm, and I'm the without Spring one. Man Kate. You opened the Spring Man Kate and the Hazelburn 15. Uh, right? Correct. I think I even opened a long row as well. I've still got one open, but yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we tried it. He was very kind to obviously share the Hazelburn 15 with me. And like, it's a great dram, but it wasn't one of my <laughs> favorites. He much preferred it. And then we ended up bet- <laughs> betting that one and I won. <laughs> it was quite funny. <laughs> There was some boxing on at the weekend. He was like, you're pretty I was like, no, I'm good. <laughs> like, Come on, dude. I'll put, put the Hazelman 15 <laughs> rather back up. Why not? So you got that. And and there's so there's a Hazelburn. I didn't get it at the distillery, but the Hazelburn 12 that has just come out yep. is absolutely incredible. I don't know if you had a chance to try that. but uh, How limited edition? It? No. Or what yeah, it's like 9,000 bottles, I think. Okay. And it's, it's, I mean, it's difficult to get hold of. Yep absolutely Sherry, stunning did you say? yeah, yeah we, had, we had one. it on the, the um on the new oh, up, com- up and coming so it was oh. the first oh. round that we had that, one. that was and good it, yeah that was good i mean not one of my favorite of the day but like you know as i said when i was there hazelburn isn't what i go to campbelltown for so but it was a very very good round fair play i have to say the least impressive dram out of those six to me was probably the local barley yeah i wasn't and I think it's interesting that the local barley has such a cult following. I understand it to some level, but the prices in the secondary, you know, again, we talk about like value for money, but I think there's so much better value than buying the Spring Bank local barley. I, I agree. I really like the last year. You didn't like it, I know that, no. but the last year's 16. one, um, it was a, you know, it was a 10 year old. Okay. I, I, I really did that enjoy one. that, but the 11 for me is, I think there's rum in there, the there is. 11. Yeah. Oh, right. And I'm not the biggest fan of rum right yeah uh controversial opinion of the day um unless you're looking at the 1960s spring bank local barleys which i've had a couple of um incredibly grateful to say 1960s yeah there's yeah. some 66 uh, thanks to colin Dunn for that thank you colin. and uh tam um sounds like you've been spoiled i have been <laughs> spoiled with those they are fucking incredible uh they're about five or six grand a bottle now so i mean you know good luck good luck yeah um I have not liked any of the modern local barley series that I've tried. Mm. Um, I haven't been overly impressed by them. I, I've I've not minded some. Like I've kind of been like, yeah, this is okay. The one that we had on the day was like, I would say, subpar. I I struggle to put my finger on why as well. But I mean, you know, one hundred and ten pounds for local barley or sixty five pounds yeah, for was that, was that one 60? of these. Like, all day all day all day 55. it's not even a thought 55, 55. was it 55 so you oh, buy two of them that's not even a thought man. yeah <laughs> and actually you know a lot, a lot of the time the local barleys are bourbon and there was the bourbon one of these this year as well and i would rather have that than the, than Correct. the local barley although the sherry is much better the sherry's better but, and i think um, we all agreed on that on the day didn't we yeah we did uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, that that seems to be the general consensus from people who you know now they've come out online. Well, I think as well. Kilkerran That's does, a... and and I tell you what, if you'd like in a second, I know you bought your eight year old Kilkerran, which is a more recent one. I've also got an open twenty twenty one online tasting day, which is the five year old, and this for me was probably the point at which I truly was just like Kilkerran. Kilkerran is so. I remember underrated. Actually, it was quite a con- controversial opinion from you at the time because a lot of people didn't like the five. I think Ian may have been one of them. Is it heavily peated? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Just blow your yeah. socks off, mate. Yeah. So that's I the, love it. That's the thing. I think the, for don't me, speak badly about this, or I'll smack well, you. No, I've, so <laughs> save your liquid, mate. Just shall I save it? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think I maybe tried it back in. Back he's not going to enjoy it. He's not <laughs> having it. Oh, no, I'd love to try it again. I genuinely. Well, that's all you've got left, right? Um, no, I've, I've got two more bottles at home. <laughs> 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 I'm um, greedy when scoundrel. it comes to Kilkerran. <laughs> I bought a few of them. I was trying to buy more recently, funnily enough, after our trip. They're I came on auction. Back and yeah. I was like, they're not, but they. Well, there's one on auction at the moment, but it comes as a set. Right. So, yeah. Right, right, right. 
quite all yeah, the, it's the, sensational. The heavily petered, the Pete and Progresses, I've not been so much of a fan of. Okay. Um, but the the eights I've loved. The twelve is amazing. Sixteen's pretty good as well. Um, so like standard Kill Karen. Love it. Oh, and also there was a sixteen year old Kill Karen rum cask at the festival last year. That's interesting. That to me, you could get a full bottle of that for I think ninety quid. There was a twenty-two year old spring bank that had a rum finish amongst a couple of other maybe like a couple of casks uh involved. Also a rum finish as part of it that was twenty as a twenty-two year old. That I think was ninety pounds for a twenty CL. Right. I think the Kill Karen was genuinely better. better liquid anyway, and you got a full bottle of it for the same price as a twenty CL of the springer and this is the thing it's like look don't get me wrong love spring bank i will pay those prices so it's not like a a slight on spring bank but it's oh, like no. people need to understand the value of your kill karens your hazel yeah. and for me long row is my favorite of the group you know um undoubtedly but but you're right kill karen is at the minute and particularly on the secondary market again we talk about people complaining i'll buy this kind of, look at kill karen it's not unreasonable no. It's actually pretty fucking accessible. Uh, you know, and again, you know, the, these ones, they're all, they've obviously sold out again. But for the price people are paying, you know, I've seen people offering the pair of these, the both eight-year-olds, for like 160, 170, but on the secondary market, they're obviously making 40 quid, 50 quid. 50 yeah. quid on the two, but I mean, you're still paying 80, 85 pounds a bottle. But at the end of the day, first fill, cask strength, eight-year-old whiskey that tastes stop complaining buy it and enjoy it right why not why could not be, could be a lot worse right you know that eight-year-old spring bank from uh again the when was it like one of the virtual open days that goes for 200 quid not very good quid. people and people don't complain about that in the same Which... way that people are complaining about the cool karens where you're paying less than 100 quid a bottle yeah strange it's all brand names, though, isn't it, mate? Yeah. Brand names. It's just bullshit. It's people who don't understand actually what they're buying. And probably most people who are complaining are the people who aren't even fucking opening it, right? It's people who are like, oh, my label's broken. <laughs> <laughs> this greatly affects my experience of whiskey. Well, that's it, isn't it? Pop off. Try the other one. Yeah. It's like when, uh, I mean, Ari and I split, and, and we talked about this on the Glen Goyne episode. We, we had a bottle of Glen Goyne 30, and we had obviously a, 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 a dram of that whilst we're on it. I got it without the box. I saved myself three hundred pounds. Uh, I've never tried to drink a box before. <laughs> a little bit oaky, yeah, uh, probably a bit chewy as yeah, well. Yeah, a little bit. Um, a little not bit. sure I would, even if someone offered to pay me three hundred pounds to drink that box. <laughs> That's an interesting point. Yeah, no, for um, sure. All right, so where are we at? What else have we got on the uh, on the tables? What, what what's left to try? We've got the Kill Karen Eight. We've got Kill Karen Eight. We've got another. We've got another long row. We've got the long row. Okay. Should we do yep. long let's row do a Kill Karen. Should we do a Kill Karen? Yeah, let's do it. I don't think we've done one yet. We so no. no. Yeah, let's do it. Sorry? Well, I tell you what. Let's do a couple of different ones. Let's do two of us. Do the eight. Two of us. Do the five. Do we want to do that? Give it a whirl. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well I'm going to try the Kill Karen because I've tried these little handfuls, and you all have really. Well, we've got the. Um, we'll, we'll go and kill Karen. That's that's staying there for the minute, mate. All right. Okay. Fair enough. Let's do that. Um, I've got a bottle of the Kill Karen eight at home that I've opened and you try this thing. So I'll, I'll go back for this. It's been a couple of years since I've had it. Oh, we're gonna go for the eight. I was gonna yeah. say exactly because I've had I had that last week. So. Um... All right. It's healthy. Health. That'll bring me home. So you didn't buy this on the trip, but we tasted this, didn't we? So, um... so sorry, where did you buy this? I picked this up from, it was either Aberdeen Whiskey Shop or from Whiskey Shop Dufftown. So it was one of those two. I can't remember yeah. which one. I, I got mine from Master and Malt. Uh, and uh, actually, I got two bottles of sharing in the end. I liked it that much. I got one from Master and Malt and one from somewhere else. I can't remember. Tindrum, maybe? This raw is, my whiskies that was it in the ballot raw my whiskies this is absolute filth um yes yeah dirty 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 it's good right i, love it. <laughs> I really love it you said that to um was it craig that was taking her up us around on the tour 
You're saying about what how Kilkerran is really dirty, take nothing, dirty yeah. and don't take that as a, you know. Yeah, I know, but he knew, didn't he? He's of like, he I'm fucking filthy, mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know why, but he's not English, is he? <laughs> Sounds nothing like that. No, he sounded nothing like that <laughs> yeah. at all. But he did. He was like, of course he I agree. Like, definitely agreed. gets it, mate. He gets it. Lock, stock, and two smoking barrels of Kilkerran. It's just dirt, isn't it? It's just, <laughs> oh, I love it. Having tried the new make, it's just amazing how close you you can trace it all the way through. There's there's not many new makes you can just immediately tell mm. what they are, and it's just flows. It's interesting it. that you agree with that on the spring bank, and then you're saying that on the Kilkerran level. Mm. That's really interesting. Mm. I have to say, yeah, no, look, I was very impressed by the cleric on both fronts. It's it's very cool to see that sort of liquid coming direct off the stills before any cask influence has been involved. The thing I love about Kilkerian is it is very complex. Mm -hmm. You've got that kind of <sighs> sooty, dirty sort of garage note going on. Yes. But then you've also got the kind of bacon bits, kind of fatty oiliness to it. You've got a level of smoke, but there's also this kind of peaty funk. Yeah. You've there's also got the sweet, sweetness. The sweetness. You know? And that's their cask selection. Yeah. This yeah. is what they're doing so well with the Kilkerran. And again, we talk about whiskies and age. And we look at whiskies and we talk about, oh, well, it needs to be burr, 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 10 years, 18. Fuck off. Yeah. Just <laughs> fuck off. Kil Five years old. This is amazing. I'm currently drinking the eight years. It's just sensational. Amazing. And again, you look at the average age of liquid bottled by these big conglomerates. You get the Azios, your Pernos, your White and Mackays, etc. The average age of liquid in bottle is eight. So yeah. why does everything need to be, you know, brrr, let's just spend a load of fucking money. I, I'm going gonna, gonna to counter that with one of the reasons for that is because a lot of liquid that is bought is red label. Dewar's white label. Of course, of course. But, but but my point being, mate, by and large, obviously we're speaking as some level aficionados, enthusiasts, whatever yes, you want to yeah. call us. Certainly not professionals. It's not very professional here. But we're enjoying <laughs> professional ourselves. Fridays. Yeah, exactly. We're enjoying ourselves. It's like Mufti Day in here. <laughs> <laughs> just, mm. just get involved. Anyone do whatever the fuck they want. Right? But But no, but this is the thing. It's like, I think that people are too focused on age statements. And actually, when you've got this rich, oily, robust liquid like a Kilkerran, and you put it into a really good cask, five to eight years is enough. But with this... Let's not be precious about age. Let's be precious about taste. They fucking proudly put eight on this. That is the biggest font. Same with the five, man. Boom, let's put a big circle around it. Heavily yeah. peated, aged five years. It's because they know the liquid's fucking good. They stand behind it. In yeah. fact, interest. Probably shouldn't be the biggest font, right? I'm kind uh, of. No, it doesn't matter. Doesn't age matter? is fine. Yeah, yeah. Is age is okay. fine? Yeah, All right, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, hmm. Yeah, no, let's not get them involved with the Scotch Whiskey Association. <laughs> I've had people dobbing me in as well. You know who you are, you fucking yeah. cheap bastards. But it's <laughs> well, no why, That's it's why no I was bringing it up, fun, right? Man. Ooh, I was like, ooh, like, ooh We'll message them. We'll message you never them see privately. Never of that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. The legacy of your label. The font size of your... Uh, you know what? Uh, when I spot problems with labels or problems and shit like that, just reach out to the people directly. Or just, just so you know, man. Yeah, but no, but even just from a point of view, just so you know, if, if you you're care, gonna if you're gonna re-release this, if you, you just care, might want to know. Though, if you have a heart yeah. beating in your chest, yeah, yeah. If not, just ignore it. Why not? We, well, yeah, that. Or if you're rotten, if you're on the snitch, inside, if you're a rat, somebody who's married into the stop. industry, and <laughs> <laughs> you stop. can say too much. You know who you are, mate. You fucking know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I love this though. Kill Karen. Boom. It's the tits. I love it. I have a I have a friend that just absolutely adores Kill Karen. And part of it is that he says like this is his meat because he's vegan. That's so, that's so cool, funny. That's oh my god, I love that. I want my, my sister's a vegetarian and you know what? 
if she drank whiskey, I'd be like, that's <laughs> so good. And it is. Mm. I can see how you can be a vegetarian now. You just have Kilkerran mm. every day. I think that's As it. your meat substitute. <laughs> well, a breakfast. I'm not saying it's healthy, Stevie. I'm saying it's a good substitute. You can replace your beef with Kilkerran, right? Mm. Vegetables so- and some Kilkerran. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Man, yeah, it's a just, fucking good shout. All... Just dip a fucking broccoli Your into it. Your mate onto something here. Like, <laughs> seriously onto something. Oh, my God. Shit. Fantastic. Scrambled eggs and kill Karen in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> I could live at your house. Yeah. yeah eggs Royale. Well, That's just it. <laughs> eggs. Eggs <laughs> Royale. Very good. Love mm. it. But it is. It works well at young ages. It's mm. just brilliant. Yeah. Oh. It's interesting there's been a moment of silence for Kill Karen. We've really. Mm. That's so true of everything. Mm. We've stayed chat and shite throughout. And there's yeah. Been, there's been a. Yeah. I, I, I said. What do you think of the five? I'm pretty sure I had it at the time and, and didn't get on with it. I'm digging you it did. a lot more now. As in, like, that is a correct answer. Yeah. You had it and you didn't enjoy it. I remember. Yeah, because we had this bottle. I think we went through two bottles. I think you may have opened a bottle as well. Definitely two. Bo- well, no, actually, that's the third bottle because I I bought two bottles. And you don't have any? I have none. Okay, so you did your two, and this is. But one then of mine. again, like I'm sure, like all of us, I have boxes and things tucked away here and there. So yeah, maybe, for sure, for sure. but yeah, at least two bottles. And I'm yeah. pretty sure you you tried some of that at the time. And yeah, you, and I remember you saying you like you weren't a fan, but now, I am still going to say I probably prefer that eight to that okay but as a standalone dram yeah yeah, yeah on its own. I, so i think with 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 this Excuse one me. i think um and, and maybe because it's been open obviously you know it's oxidized clearly for a, a you know a hot minute a couple of years um <laughs> it, it feels generally more integrated the the peat is is a it's a super dry peat like it's it, it's kind of sucking it's not kind of like a lemon but it, it takes a lot of the moisture out of your mouth definitely um and I think in the less heavily peated eight, it just feels a little bit more rounded. And it the is. Pete's, Pete's a bit more integrated. And you know what? I prefer the five to the eight. Yeah. Because no, I, I, I want to be bullied by Kilkerran. Could because he, I want to be put in my place. Because his mouth wants to be dry. Honestly, yeah. I want to be punished. It. It's a bit of like a kink with me and Kilkerran. It's just brutal. It's just like... A Kilkerran right, kink. Look Man, out yeah, for I got it. I got the uh, <laughs> Kil- Kilkerran kinky. Yeah, yeah right. the Kilkerran BDSM edition. Right. Spank me up with a Kilkerran. Jake I don't mind it. going to get okay. his... Spit in my mouth with Kilkerran. <laughs> fluffy handcuffs. Okay, this and, is getting out of uh, here. Putting, I'm putting his stuff. What is happening? Harry out of his comfort Aaron, zone. Welcome to as a uncut, guest yeah. and unfiltered podcast. Unfortunately, you're not getting away from it now. It's already begun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Craig. We're however many drams deep. Craig's you're here getting now, yep. sir. You're all a part of it. Craig's getting his whip out and uh drink whiskey with friends is just taking a dive in the social sort of hierarchy. People aren't rating that anymore. A swingers account. That's what's happened <laughs> right now. Just associating crazy. with the wrong people, mate. You're associating with the wrong people. <laughs> Oh my gosh. But no, I definitely agree with you. <laughs> you know, it could become its own kink. <laughs> I still favor Long Row. I really love Long Row. To me, there's very few things. I love the Red Series. I love that you brought this, and it's a great way to sort of show people at home the, the expansive range that they've got. I think that it, it, you know, as I said already, that kind of red wine cask with the peat, which is ultimately what long row red is all about right it's about you know different red wine or or fortified wines with long row i just think it works so well and for me that's where the winner of springbank is but i i equally think yeah as we've said now a couple of times but just to reiterate for people who love the springbank for people who are chasing these sort of unattainable drams or drams that they feel are out of their price range i appreciate the frustration i get it i do you know, it is difficult to see whiskies that you've tried before or that you would love to try at prices that you just can't quite afford. But I think that there are other options out there. The Campbelltown lot, both of these Kilkerrans, very accessible, even still now in the secondary market in comparison to other Reno you know, releases. Just maybe broaden your horizon. Stop hunting for that brand name and mm-hmm. start hunting for that quality of spirit. It's all made by the same people at the end of the day, right? Yeah. So they know what they're up to. Give them a bit of faith. So, I'm going to say, I find Long Grow mix. 
next. I think long row is a little bit marmitey. Okay. And it can either be so marmite's maybe the wrong word. It's either exceptional or average. Okay. So I find the core range non age statement long row heavily petered, bleh, not bold, not fast. Okay. I think the long row reds, pretty much without exception, I love. They are um, great. Last year's long row eighteen that was in 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 fairly heavy sherry, oh, absolutely beautiful. The long row seventeen that was in rum, fantastic. Do you know what I don't like? The long row twenty one. That's the other. So that was the other thing I was going to say. That apart until we had that long row twenty seven, I was also going to say, oh, you mature anything long... eighteen plus, not worth mm, it. Not right? worth it. The yeah. twenty one long row ob is in my mind. Yeah, substandard. It's yeah. not what you want. It's not what you look for. I don't really understand what they're doing with it. And a lot of the time, it drops to perilously low ABVs. And I think also there was uh, last year we were at Milroy's. We had a, a lovely lineup that we kind of paid for between a, a, a few of us. And we had the long row, and it was below even forty six percent where they'd normally bottle at. And for a what we believe was cask strength at that ABV, it tasted watery. Really? Yeah. Mm. Disappointing. That is disappointing, I have to say. But like you say, just to sort of bring it back, whilst the 21-year-old OB is disappointing, I think I think what Long Row is for is kind of, in my mind, like a Leche. It's a whiskey lover's whiskey. Yeah. I, I, I don't get that's wrong. where it puts. That's where it should be positioned for me. And so a 21-year-old at 46%, it's not what it's about in my mind yeah. it's kind of like let's release it at a big bolshy cast strength every time let's do funky red wine finishes on it yes let's release it even at young ages and i have to say i yep. know we probably won't come on to the hand fills those hand fill all of them were exceptional but the hand fill long row was my favorite it was your favorite right correct I, i'm, I'm gonna yeah. say they weren't all exceptional but the long row was ex on this trip, was exceptional long, yeah. and my favorite yeah, yeah. I, I think you're at the you're at the distillery. If you're trying to pick between them, your eyes go straight to the spring bank. Right, right. No, nope. try the long. You're wrong. Try best. the long row. Definitely, that's is the best. Man. No, that's such a good shout, Ari. And I think the I've, I've had a bunch of other long row single casks over the years. Generally, fantastic. You know, particularly between kind of ten and eighteen years of age, like just really good, really robust spirit works so well in a variety of casks um but as i said it's just a little bit inconsistent because the top and the bottom of the range have just not quite excited me in the same way that the middle has but to be honest i don't care because the middle is that so relatively accessible good. price point people are still as you said ignoring it a little bit compared to spring bank yep. you know this 11 year old which i think is absolutely amazing when it first came out peaked at maybe i don't know 140, 150 pounds at auction when it was, how much was it? 65, 75? She said 75, right? It's come back down to about 9,500 pounds a bottle. Which at that price is worth it every day. Yeah. And again, the longer 18, I did not get a bottle when it came out last year. I didn't get any ballot allocation. I couldn't find it any retail. I missed out. And I think it's 110, 120 pounds a bottle. I paid 110 at auction plus fee. So I, I, I think someone probably lost out mm. with how they sold it. Yeah. I'm fucking delighted to have got it at that price. Of course it's you were. Lovely. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Fair play. No, but I, I have to say, I, I, you know what? I haven't tried too much Long Row 18, so I'm not going to put my um, two cents in on that one. But the 21 for me, I've tried a few expressions now. I was very kindly gifted uh, uh, the ends of a bottle, which is kind of telling. By yep. a client of mine, you know, lovely client. Gave me the ends of a bottle, but I don't think he enjoyed it that much. Mm. Yeah, and I didn't enjoy it that much. I, I, and the I, fact that you guys are also saying, eh. yeah, I've I've had a couple of batches. I agree. The longer eighteen again, I, I've had a couple of. I, I generally, you know, especially for the price, cause it's a big jump between the eighteen and twenty one. Better, but not amazing in in comparison to some of the cask strength and and finished versions that have got different cask types. And you know, for anyone who's out there being, oh, he just doesn't like longer enough. What I'm going to say is, I've all of the open day releases last year, the Long Row 15 was the best by far. The hand fills, the Long Row is the best by far. For sure. I love Long Row in the right circumstances. Yes. It's just, 
a little bit mixed. They are definitely something to pick up if you're there, you know. Yeah, but I agree. Because I, I agree with, with you, Ian. Go with the kind of go with the finish, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Or a, or a maturation if it's in a single cask, like, or if you know somehow someone comes out with a very old bourbon cask long row because we had a 27 year old fucking <laughs> well, pick that up grab but... that yeah yeah that would be awesome i would be <laughs> all over that yeah absolutely man <laughs> all right well listen i think uh we're at a point where look as we say we can sit here and chat all afternoon we, and we probably could. will so that's fine but for people at home they're probably a bit fed up of us chatting shite about whiskey so let's do a little roundup um glenn scotia we started with this, so let's start with this. This five-year-old, 20-port finish, distillery exclusive. Are we buying? Are we not buying? We're saying £55, I think, was the price? Buy. 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 It's a no-brainer, right? Yeah. Obviously a buy. Glen Scotia, one of the most undervalued whiskies in Campbelltown. Uh, it's just not given enough attention. Please get down to Campbelltown. Give them a visit. But if you don't have the time for that, pick up a bottle. Delicious. Definitely a buy on that. The Campbelltown lock, I don't think I'm even going to put it out to you guys. I'm just going to say, but no, no, I'm not that much of a dick. Go on. I will honestly, buy it. yeah, honestly, that's how I feel. Like, you have to buy this. Listen, for yeah. 40 pounds, it was great. It's just compared to what you can buy for 40 pounds these days. Correct. I buy that over It's such a well balanced, yep. well rounded whiskey. It's got some wonderful depth, but it's not as bolshy as some of the sort of single malts that come out of Campbelltown. For me, it is everything that people who complain about prices yep. should be looking for yep. in Campbelltown. But I, I'm a buyer. That's just me. No, I'm, I'm will, buying. Are you? Buy it with three of your friends and drink it in one night. That's <laughs> Ari, Ari, right, Ari's, Ari's on yeah. a booze cruise. He's getting heavily involved. <laughs> Fuck it. You Ten need to consume each. the bottle in an evening, apparently. It's yeah. that yep. good. I love it. Okay. Cool. Yeah, seriously, man. I was, I, 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 I'm kind of the same. Like, buy two, right? Right. They batch it, so it changes. Buy two, yeah. because then you've got a backup. True, true, Just true. in case. I agree with that. Buy two. Buy two. All right, cool. What do we move on to next? We were on the My Spring Bank First Fill Sherry? Yeah. First Fill Sherry, 14-year-old. This is a cage bottle. Obviously, we appreciate you won't necessarily be able to pick this up as easily as us. It sells for £75 in the shop at that price. I think it would be a no-brainer not to buy it. Will you all buy? I would buy the fucking cask of this if I could. Okay, so buy, buy, buy. But let's discuss for people at home who maybe can't visit the distillery. They want to buy at an auction. They're looking at £200. They're looking at £250. They're looking at £300. How much do you love Spring But at what point do you stop buying? You tell me, yeah. Where would you buy this bottle at? Maximum price. £100. £100. Okay. Ian? I genuinely think this is probably my favorite whiskey I've drunk today. Okay. Uh, Maximum price. I'd probably start crying above 250. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. But yeah. I think I'd be all right to pay 200 for it. It's, it's so fucking good, yeah, Stevie. No, but, like, age, that's fair enough, Ian. Age right, is just a number. It's Hit so me. tasty. No, I know. No, I'd, of course. I'd put in a bid for 100, 180 and then I wouldn't win. Okay. So that yeah, because I'd be I, buying I, it 200. I, I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yes. You know what? I'm with Ian. I would pay 200 pounds for this. I don't. I don't want to say I would go too much above that. Yeah. There may be the odd, there's the odd auction where we all log on and we see something and we get a little bit too attached and we start bidding a bit more than we fucking should. And this is one of the drams that could be one of those drams. Yeah. I maybe would reach up to 250 and feel a bit bad after winning. But I think 200 pounds is a fair price to play. Like that, 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 yep, I, mean, I would pay that for this personally. Yeah. Me. All right. That's where we are with that. Then we went on to the Burgundy. Burgundy. I would pay... Four hundred pounds to that. Oh, <laughs> I honestly, in. I would pay for a what sick, you've got I would left. How much will you sell that for, for that. Dude, to Jake? Have no, I, I, have it, mate. No, I'm not going to take it. No, 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 it's not no, 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 it's funky, it's weird, it's dirty. I love it. I just, I've, I've fallen in love with that style of whiskey. I think it's really interesting how all of you picked up on the sulfur so heavily because it's something that for me fits into that dram so perfectly. But maybe I'm just used to the style. What are you, what are your thoughts there, Arian? Me? The I, I, I would give it to you and then have you owe me. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I would do. 
<laughs> he wants a, a debt yep. from the whiskey yeah. barrel. No, Fair enough. No, no money, I, just just you know, loyalty or something. <laughs> I don't know anything, but just yeah, just it's just pledging my fealty to you. Yeah. Here you go, Doberman, <laughs> as my king. Uh, that's it. Yeah, let me walk your dog a few times. That would be that would be Dude, enough. you can fucking you walk go. my dog for, for free. free. <laughs> yeah. I will take the spring bank if you want to walk tricks. That's fine. All right, Ian, where are you at? Uh, Obviously, you bought the bottle for seventy five. Again, this is another seventy five pound bottle. If you were lucky enough to pick it up, I love it. Um, Maximum price. I, I don't think I would have another bottle in the same way I'd have another bottle of that fourteen. So I'm glad I have one at home. Okay. I'm going to seek out probably another one of them because right. really, I really could good. just drink that. This one, I think I'd pay maybe another one twenty, one thirty for two, another bottle. Pounds. Probably a little bit lower than that. But I, I love. I, I really, really liked it. I'm so glad I've had it. Um, for me, it doesn't, because of the sulfur, it doesn't hit home in quite the way that some of the other Springbanks have. For sure. Okay. Cool. Um, and I like it probably less than the Springbank Burgundy that you gave me a sample of. That's the, the 12. The, the old core, like not core range, the old special release. It's one been a it. minute since I tried it, yeah. so I, I couldn't even begin to compare. But yeah, fair. Stevie, what are you paying for this? Obviously, I pay retail. Seventy-five pounds you pay. That's what I'd pay. But that's all you pay? That's all I'd pay, yeah. Fair enough. Absolutely. That's what it's worth. That's what they priced it up. That's yeah. what I pay. Yeah. I hear that. You know what? I, and I, I appreciate people listening at home must be like, this guy is a fucking idiot. Yeah. Why are you paying 400 pounds? I, I, and I can feel it from you in particular. You're in a bit with yourself, mate. I know. And you know what? That's fine. I would pay up to three, 400 pounds for that. I wouldn't necessarily be pleased to pay that. I think the question that. is, though, Jay, I would much rather would wait. Would you pay retail? Uh, of course. And that, yeah. Okay. Of course. Yes. When we were up there, all I was at, please. Even if you stuff. don't have a burgundy, in the, just go out and find me a burgundy. <laughs> do it like you used to do it. Draw a cask sample yes, now. Come on. They didn't. It wasn't happening. I gave in. I didn't want to be too, you know, they gave us so much. I couldn't ask for much more, <laughs> Jesus. But I would pay for that through and through. And in my mind, it is worth kind of four times the RRP because I enjoy it so much. Yep. That, yeah. It's sick. That's it is fine. sick. It is absolutely disgusting and it's no way to spend money and <laughs> I'm whatever. People at home will comment what they will comment and that's fine. I will take it. I love this. What, it's what, so delicious. What price on your enjoyment if that's what you want, right? Like there's no other way of getting Springbank Burgundy. Right? If I have to, that's where I would go. Obviously, I would rather pay £75 at the distillery and as I said, Having tried this now, I will be waiting to hear of a yep. burgundy cask released at the distillery. I will drive up for that. Definitely. Unquestionably. Kilkerrans. Mm. The five I already bought, I'm definitely buying. I can't remember the RRP. I think it was something silly. It was silly. It was silly. It was, it was, it was, like, was, four, it was like 45. Yeah, it was I think nothing. it was, I think it it was, was below 50 yeah, pounds. Yeah, That's yeah. what I remember yeah, it as well. for me. Bye, bye for you. Bye. Bye. They're no-brainers. Yeah. yeah, bye, bye, Just bye. Well, oh, uh, the eight? Uh, mm. well, actually, you wouldn't buy the five. Forty-five quid? No, 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 no. This is only a ten or more. I'd rather have Forget two. Forget that. that. No, came no, no, out no, no, no. It's a valid point. It's a valid point. Give it to him. It's not five-year-old. Yeah, you would buy it forty-five pounds though. No, because I'd rather spend another tenner and have that. Yeah, but that's okay. just come out. That's interesting. If you didn't know that existed, would you buy that? They've been doing Kill two they, years ago. They've been doing Kill Karen Eights for a few years, though. So they like okay. they have existed in the sense that Kill Karen Eights have been a series. So you'd for a buy while. two of those. Well, yeah, I'd rather. Yeah. No, no, yeah. no. He's saying that's fifty-five pounds. I'd rather spend the extra tenner and have that. No, you spend my logic more. works, right? Because that is newer than that. So at the I time that so. they ca- no, because my logic is the time that they came out. Was forty five pounds? Would you pay for it, knowing that doesn't exist? But that does but exist. It did, and it did exist batches, at the time. It did. Just you're a missing. Batch. Yeah, no, you're missing what you're saying. So he's saying that that was a batch three years ago. They still did the eight. Yeah. Okay. Still sherried. Although, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I tried the older batch. That's the best batch of eight that I've tried. So the first well, batch. No. So I think there's been four batches. I've tried two. So there's 20, maybe three. There's twenty. I can't remember yeah, how it's twenty twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three. So there's four batches. I definitely of, tried the 2020. The 2020 is the best. That is fucking amazing whiskey. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He knows the first, it. The first batch. The one with the old school bottle. Yeah. The, tall, the, the, the tall bottles. The first okay, one. no, sorry. I haven't tried that. Okay, so you had the, the 2021. You had the 2021, which okay. was super sulfury and not great. I, I like it. Yeah, well, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> Kel cool. Surprise. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> uh, then the 22 was um, not sulfury, really nice. But of the three non-sulfury ones, probably my least favorite. 
Okay. And then this one, which is pretty close to the 2020, in my opinion. Okay, okay, fair enough. Um, the 2022, I think, was just a bit clean. It didn't have quite so much of the earthy kind of dirtiness. <laughs> I'd see, I, no, I, that's what I look for. That's what Kim Karen <laughs> is. <laughs> That's the hard. He wants to be bullied. He's yeah, him the film. Yeah. exactly. There's no spanking involved. <laughs> yeah, sorry, we won't go back um, into that. Arian's not ready for it. <laughs> yeah. So this 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 one I love, but there was a 2020 eight year old kill carry. Right. I would absolutely I my any day of the week pay the ten pounds extra for that. Fair enough. Fair enough. So by and large, it's a buy on kill carry. Yeah. I so basically, so. what we're saying, is I think we so. buy definitely. We buy all of it on RRP. For sure. Oh, yes. Why not? Yes. The but long we're run. also spending a, a decent bit more above RRP for certain expressions that we're looking for. You are. Yeah. I am beyond <laughs> belief of most people, which is fair enough. Yeah, no, look, I, I would I would put the burgundy as like a... a of course. I wouldn't do that with most expressions. I appreciate you're all looking at me as if I'm crazy. The and long run reds. Long run reds. Finishing on them. It's definite. Sorry, yes. what did you pay for this RRP? 75. 75. Yeah. Of course, yeah, damage label, all that. Um, Jake? Of course. You easy. did easy, yeah, yeah. easy. Me too. It's delicious. Yeah, yeah. It's I pay 120 pound for that. Yes, I yeah. would too. I would rip too. the label I off. I think that's where it's worth. <laughs> I would have thought it would have been up there at that RRP. Yeah, anyway. I think that's where it's worth. I think yep. the top level of the worth for the Long Row Reds as a series is about 120 pounds. Yep. Again, like I'm sure people are probably thinking, well, why would you spend 400 pounds on this, but only 120 pounds on this? It's like in my mind, because what you like, mate. It's what I like. Yeah, <laughs> but also. I just think the long row reds are like small batch most of the time, right? They're not yeah. single cask. They are small batch. They've been created with purpose, with quite like with intent. Mm -hmm. Like this is what we're going to release in the X number of years. Whereas when you come to the single cask burgundies, they are super limited edition. And so, yeah, you look, there's some long row reds that I've tried. There's one or two that are just streets ahead of the rest, right? Mm -hmm. I know we're uh, finishing up. The story behind Long Grow Red <laughs> was super cool. And let's try and tell it in Go on, 30 you seconds. tell it quickly. You hit, hit so, it. So, the, the, the first Long Grow Red came about because there was an Australian wine, wine kind of grower, and they called themselves Long Grow. Yeah. Two words. A vintner's called Long Yeah. Grow, but yes. Unlike some companies who would get a little bit litigious about it, they kind of sat down and had a bit of a chat and they were like oh, all right as long as you boys don't move into whiskey do whatever the fuck you want right but we'll have a couple of casks please yeah and they sent they were if like, they're good yeah they, they were like were, they were all right I, don't, I can't remember that it was maybe shiraz casks or whatever they sent them over and they stuck a bunch of long row in it and that became the first long grow red and, and they've it done it every year. amazing yeah, exactly <laughs> and, this is the and thing, it's a, just a happy fucking circumstance right yeah, and as opposed to people, this is the thing again the industry looking at things in a positive attitude looking right where is the opportunity here yes not let's sue these motherfuckers let's mm. make sure they that get buried and they never have a business again it's like look you're long row we're long row you do wine we do whiskey there's space for both of us let's all have the crack no brainer let's actually work together yeah yeah no i i think uh the story behind long row red is awesome and 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 i think the liquid that they continue to put in the bottle is awesome um i'm sorry i'm gonna call it here because i i could just stay here for fucking all afternoon. we are over but i think well over two hours Ooh. by and large oh one of our longest podcasts if yet. anyone is still listening at home yeah if you are I'm sorry. thank you i'm sorry and well, well done for making it here you have just earned a free bottle no you haven't <laughs> But nearly, Almost. nearly, nearly. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for joining us, gents. All of you, thank you for bringing your drams. Thank you for sharing them. Thank you for joining us on the Campbelltown experience. I cannot wait for another trip of a similar fashion. Uh, to all of you at home, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this episode interesting, exciting. I hope that we've got you involved in the Springbank and Campbelltown vibe as a whole. Go buy there. Some Scotia, Go there. Yeah, buy some Springbank. Sake. Visit Campbelltown. Get involved. And have a wonderful afternoon. Slanjava. 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 Guys, take care.